man, it's Friday night, late night, April 22nd, 2022. This is the Soapbox. I'm Dennis. I'm slightly inebriated. Uh, we just finished our Moon Knight episode four chat on Dan Excelsior, the Mostly Marvel podcast. Uh, and uh, we had a special guest, Joel and Eric. And now we're just going to be hanging out here currently with Eric, who just showed up. What uh, up? I just set it up before people get here because I know most people got to go use her. I, for some reason, I just don't use the restroom until we're all done. Uh, I got a Gatorade bottle, actually. So I'm. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm. Uh, dude, I, it's only been, you know, whatever, an hour and a half or something like I, that. So I used before and I'm good to go. You know what? I'm probably sure. I'm pretty sure that time we stayed up till two in the morning, I probably oh, did use the restroom somewhere. Holy in the crap. No, I'm definitely I, I think sure because, like, I was just doing zigzags like between here and there, and I was just like, I was yeah. just drinking a lot, and just it was so late. But yeah, no, I definitely took a lot of bio breaks during that. Yeah, that part. But uh, it's, it's funny how much Travis wants to hate Moon Knight. He, he wants, wants to hate Moon Knight. He wants he likes, like, but it's like this internal struggle, right? Like he likes being it, shown like some fun stuff, but um, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the whole clans thing. Like, yeah, you know. I. I've said it every week because I just can't stop it. Because like, it's always been the weirdest turnoff for me. Like I, I, I like I like when they um they show him with like the the black face. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds horrible, uh, but I like when they when his his face is shaded to be like completely a little darker covered under in, uh, like under covered like covered in covered in shadow. Yeah, but I but I know that that's a, that's a that's a a design choice, and it's not actually the the fabric is. The fabric is supposed to be white. They just like to make it look like the hood is completely covering his head and shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it, get that. It helps. It helps a little bit when it's all black and you just see white, two white eyes underneath the blackness. You know, but definitely makes it look creepier. But kind of but overall, overall, I just never been able to get into the character. And then, like, I tried once in like the in like the mid two thousands to get into like the there was a run drawn by like david finch or something like that hmm. um and it was so weird because the whole comic that i decided to jump in on it was moon knight questioning all of reality and wondering if he was actually ever moon knight to begin with oh interesting and i'm like i can't handle this, this is the first moon knight comic i ever read this is like <laughs> what is this this, like, this is this way is, too deep this is you know, give me some like, action yeah this doesn't yeah. make sense like it, it was hurting my brain Hey, just um, curious, am I coming out of your headphones or am I coming out of your speakers? Because I uh, almost I almost hear an echo. Almost hear an echo. I, I, well, I hear the tiniest echo. Mostly when I get loud. So it might that make makes me think it might be your headphones. Mm. You don't hear me, you don't you hear me in your headphones, right? But you don't I hear, hear me. Hear, yeah. I'm not you don't hear me you. also in the, the screen. Here, talk, right? talk. Blah 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 blah. Nope. Yeah, I can, I can just, still hear it a little bit, but whatever. Just, just here. It's cool. It's this is the this is the like this. this is the after show. We got we got a guest in the audience already who's who's creeping on us. Oh, I, nice. I, Maybe it's I, Moon Knight. It's probably Ian. I know that Ian has problems sometimes because like he tries to watch this on his phone and and uh, the 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 links that I provide uh, on Patreon don't necessarily let him uh, open up the YouTube page on his phone. Oh, interesting. Um, I can I can try. I'll give him I'll give him the link just to be safe, because uh, I because it, it prevents him from because the Patreon for some reason, with the way he opens it, it doesn't let him um, chat with us, and so he just stalks us and listens to us the whole time. Oh, um, sweet. Like a creeper. Yeah. Well, what's up, Ian? Yeah. But um, um. But yeah, like my only. My only knowledge besides this show has been just like some covers that I've seen that I was just like super impressed with the art and that made me want to pick up the book. Um, but I didn't know anything about, oh, all right, sweet. Oh, you figured <laughs> right. it out. Nice. Now I don't need to send in the thing. Cool. Yeah. You were going to say, yeah, just the, the art. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you remember Steven Platt? Um, uh, I think he would do like S Platt. So it's like splat. Um, and uh, I don't oh, remember. Hey, Ian. Um, yeah, dude, I wish I'm, find something but the art was just like super detailed and i can um, find some i'll uh, find it right now it's 
Steven Platt, huh? Yep. That's fun. Yeah, I've got. Oh yeah, he showed up pretty quick. Yeah. Oh okay. All right. That's really cool. Yeah, it was I all will, detailed and it was all I like um. Oh, go ahead. Share this right now, so you can see it, and we can we can charge people to come see this. And even though we didn't pay for the rights to it, it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what the rules are. That's why I just hide this show back here where nobody notices things going on. Look at this. Oh, man, there's an Amazon link. I didn't mean to do that. Um, wow, look at that. That's really cool. It's crazy, right? Yeah, wow. Look at this. These are amazing. Oh, yeah, there he writes Splat. Yeah, Splat. Yeah. So he was amazing. Cool. And then he went to go work on Profit, I think. Like that was like um, yeah. a Rob Liefeld comic and stuff like that. But anyway, I was just, um, I really Gross. appreciated Splats. Yeah. Um, but I just really appreciated uh, his work on Moon Knight and everything like that. Yeah. It's, it's really eye catching. David Finch. Oh, see, that looks rad. Yeah, I like, I, this is when I was reading it for a little bit uh and i was pretty impressed with the way he does it he almost he he doesn't make him look like he's in white also you know what i mean mm -hmm. he makes it very he makes it very gray and that i think that made it more comfortable for me to to read it because i'm like okay you're not you're not creeping too hard um i thought the other funny thing about like learning about this character was knowing how much todd mcfarlane ripped off of moon knight to to, to make spawn so like that was gonna be my comparison, just like, um, like McFarlane and Stephen Platt, like you know, just kind of like the art style was like a little similar and stuff like that. But um, I never compared I meant, the the two. I meant, like, the, um, I meant the origin story. The origin story is is Spawns, but it's but Moon Knight came first. And Spawns is like a, a mercenary, I'm, a mercenary who gets betrayed by one of his teammates, left for dead, and then. Makes, makes a, a deal. deal with a god and comes back with superpowers uh but he has to he has to act out the will of of his master right how is that not spawn uh, that's a little bit a little bit i don't also, know also also in the freaking in the in the new show it's a total symbiote suit <laughs> that uh, that is a little closer i feel but uh yeah um you don't think a mercenary left, but no, I'm that part. But like, I, 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 Moon Knight, like Mark and Steven, you know, whoever, whoever else, like that, they're called like the Avatar, right? And they're kind of doing like his bidding, like Spawn, like was doing like at first, like the deeds, like what the devil wanted or something like that, right? Or, um, uh, yeah, but then well, like the... he kind of broke free of that, yeah, uh, yeah. His own I shit. Mean, eventually, but I'm just saying, like the big if you look at the origins of both characters i mean to be fair like mcfarlane felt uh he had such a flimsy story when he first set it up that like after issue one like issue two through like 10 he outsourced all those issues to other better writers mm -hmm. so that they could establish backstory and then he ended up getting his ass sued by neil gaiman because neil gaiman never got paid for all sure. the cool stuff that he wrote for for spawn I mean, was yeah. it Neil Gaiman um, that went in with him with on Angela, or is that somebody? Yeah, Neil Neil Gaiman created Angela. Yeah, I knew. I remember like that was that, and then now she's yeah, and and or, and uh, what's his name? Um, Medieval Spawn too. Oh really? I didn't yeah. know any of this, and I worked there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't know the guy that you colored either. So oh, shut up. Yeah, you didn't know Grifter, and that was pretty hard. <laughs> that was pretty hard, man. Oh, I had. I pulled that out for you, and that was that was rough. That was rough. Again, cool. it was one of those situations where I asked questions and you didn't answer them correctly. Is it a male? Yes. Is it Wonder Woman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? No. Right? Right? <laughs> that happened, and I recorded that. that and that's great. That's so yeah, good. That was great. That's my favorite part about doing this show is I just get to record Joel saying stupid shit. Hey, that's what I'm here for. That's all we've been asking for. 
So we can just like play it back yeah. when he says like, I didn't say that. Oh yeah. Oh. Click, click. You know, man, I don't want you to die, but you better believe it. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. When you die, I'm going to make <laughs> the best, the best video ever to make people really like celebrate all of Joel. Is it gonna Honestly, I, I, I have said be... once, I say once to say a thousand times, when I die, I don't want people to sit there and cry or weep any of that shit. I they won't. To, I want we're people to talk... roast me. Not with, not, not with Dennis's shit. montage. Yeah. yeah, I just want people not. to roast. I want people to roast me like crazy. That's all. With the uh, voice of the, mo- uh, voice of the man, or uh, voice of voice man, end of the road, yeah. playing in the uh, background. Maybe. I might play that. Or, or booty, might, booty, booty. Or... or or I'm blue, da ba dee ba. I feel like <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't decide. I can't decide. I can't decide which one I'll play. But yeah, I just I Anyways. honestly I've I've always said I tried to explain this to my wife that at my funeral I do not want a sober person there. I don't care who's at my funeral. I don't care if they don't drink. I just don't want nobody there sober. I want everybody there drunk, and I want everybody there talking shit. That's it. Make fun of me, make it. it, This is what will make me happy in the afterlife. Let me laugh in the afterlife. I can grab my Jameson right there. Do it, crush it, crush Crush it. it. Hey, so tell me, what do you guys think of the Batman? Uh, so like, I just so, um, I'm I'm actually gonna have to bounce here very soon. Um, I'm uh, I'm, I'm here with just, just my kid and stuff like that. So, um, but uh, I wanted to watch it in the theater, didn't make it. So I just started watching it today, um, and honestly, like I'm just right past that the scene where like, oh, I gotta follow this chick. Oh, Selena Kyle's going this way, so I'm gonna go that way, and then they get back and she's dead. So it's like, ah, great job. Um, so, but uh, I don't know, like I don't, I don't mind him so bad. I like it. He's got like a chip on his shoulder, and um, well, I think that's like bar. That's the the bare minimum for Batman is have a chip on your shoulder, right? Yeah. Like, I think every Batman should have a damn chip on his shoulder because this guy's <laughs> acting out some ridiculous therapy for mm-hmm. the death of his parents after 20, 30 years. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. For me, I feel that the it is when I saw it in the theater, I thought it was extremely long. Uh now seeing it on TV. It is still extremely long. And it is, it is really. And honestly, it is it's I still really like the movie. The only my like I watched it last night. Don't but spoil I, it, Eric. But I have, actually on, all right, so it, I'm not gonna spoil it. Oh, no, 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 I've known you for 18 years. I know what you think a spoiler is. I have um, not spoiled No, no. Anything. Okay, just uh, shut up one sec. I'm going to bounce. I'm going to bounce. Too lo- the movie's too long, though. I, I know I know it is long. Um, so I'm going to bounce, um, not because of that, but just like timing and also so you yeah, can yeah, yeah. talk and stuff like that. Uh, All right, that's but, fine. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm enjoying the movie so far, um, but I'm curious to see where it goes. So, um, yeah. But uh, I think, I think, I think the, 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 the future of the franchise looks brighter than the movie itself. Hmm. I yes. think, I think, I think where, where it ends is like, okay, I, I want to see what you do next, but please make it less than three hours long. Mm. Yes. That's fair. Honestly, I, I just liked it. If, I would have liked it more if it was shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Like I different. could, I could still watch the dark Knight or Batman begins or dark Knight rises over and over again. And those are just ridiculous roller coaster rides of mm-hmm. like just up and down and up and you almost don't get a chance to catch a breath you know what i mean yeah and those I movies think are so good this I, movie i think wants to like almost lull you to sleep and then it's like here's an action scene and like oh cool i'm awake i'm awake you know like it, it takes a little longer to get there it's just a different pace and i know they're trying to be more you know true to the comics and stuff but like but i feel like at a certain point it just became so such a rehash of the comics that I wasn't surprised by anything that happens in the movie. I, I, think that's, I, I will that's, still yeah. say that this is probably it's not the best Batmobile scene, but it is the most energizing Batmobile. All right. Scene well, um, I'll, like, like I'm, I'll, I'll try to watch it tomorrow, so I'm a little bit more caught up. But I'll look for the Batmobile scene anyway. Um, wait. Yeah, you won't miss it. 
I won't you miss, won't it. miss um, it. Yeah, Dennis, you won't miss it. Thank you again very much for having me on. Oh yeah, no, we just Dude, like, man, I, just I have like a blast on these things. Like, and it's great seeing you, and <laughs> yeah, you look good, and um, that's why we do it because it's just for fun. Because it, it ain't making money, so don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> um, bummed I missed you at WonderCon, but um, hopefully I'll see you. Yeah, I'll be at Comic Con. At Comic Con and stuff like that, and we can like I'll super geek out again. Uh, but uh, yeah. Be hanging out with you, Benji. I'll not so it. much. Um, yeah, you yeah, yeah. no, no. I'll, you say because you love me. I'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, later, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. you guys. Have a great time. Uh, look forward to listening to this later. Okay, cool. cool. Thanks, guys. Right, so, bye. 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 That, that's the thing. All right, let's talk shit. Talk shit. <laughs> okay. Now here's my here's my thing. Like I watched it last night, and I literally had to stop it after the Batmobile scene because I was just like. I remember starting it at seven o'clock mm-hmm. and I looked at my watch when the Batmobile scene came on and it was nine. And yeah. I was just like, fuck. Yeah. I still got like another 45 minutes of this shit. No, that was like, like an hour, man. Once yeah. once I had, once I got past the Batmobile scene, I was just like, I am not gonna lie. Batmobile scene, gorgeous. The, the scene at the stadium, gorgeous. I love that scene. I just could not wait to get to the stadium part. I couldn't take the time to yeah. go to the stadium part. It, it just, it was just too freaking long. And it's actually funny because when I saw it in the theater, it was literally everything had happened and they caught the Riddler. And I was just like, okay, whew, that was a good movie. That was a good. Oh shit. There's more. Oh. It's like, it's like the uh, Lord of the Rings return of yes. the king. There's so yeah. many extra endings that don't like, oh my God. Yeah, that's uh, exactly I, what I told my wife. Yeah, it's it's too long, but uh, I yeah, I watched it with my wife, and uh, it was hard because like she hated it. She was really, she did not like that movie, man. She did not wow. like how emo he was. She 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 described it as this movie is for everybody who grew up in the '90s and jacked off their nasty little dick to the crow. <laughs> And, and I don't think she's wrong. I don't think she's wrong. <laughs> I can't um, say she's wrong because me and Val were talking and definitely Batman is very emo. Yeah. But it's like, I still, I just like the fact that he's not, he's not the Ben Affleck, like big brooding, like, I'm going to beat everything up. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, no. Like, yeah, but I, I look at him and you just say like, what the hell? Or Christian Bale where there was a lot more interesting aspects of Christian Bale. Yeah, but I think I think the biggest problem is I'm getting tired of every director thinking that the next Batman has to be the most dark and broody and mm-hmm. most grounded in reality Batman ever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do you know how many cool Batman villains are not grounded in reality? Let's stop doing this. Like, let's stop I, making let's stop making that a parameter for how you tell the story. You could have told the story, but also still had like some more fantastic elements in it. You, like, Batman's a noir comic, but with Killer Croc and Poison Ivy and Scarecrow. You know, like it's like I was reading online that they were saying that Affleck was his next villain was supposed to be Mister Freeze, which I actually thought would have been dope as shit that's like, cool but mr freeze is still grounded in like science fiction you know what i mean but like mm-hmm. i want like i want the weird ones like 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 like, Kill just, Rock. like ragman yeah, or yeah yeah mm-hmm. just like so there's supernatural villains that batman is like mm-hmm. I, the thing i love about batman is he doesn't care where you come from as a villain he's still gonna fuck you up mm-hmm. and and i appreciate that so but anyways i look at yeah. I just look at it where I I I kind of feel that um we got um uh what's the name um the Christian Bale Batman yeah he he kind of messed it up for everybody because now everybody only wants to do the grounded in real life Batman like when Michael Keaton was Batman it was actually that was not reality that's for sure it was not reality it was he was not they weren't trying to play him as a real guy they weren't trying to play him as like they tried to play him as a comic book character and then they did george clooney which was way too comic booky to the point where it was hokey 
when then they went to Christian Bell, which was yeah. then they went to Val Kilmer, and that was like really no Val bad. Kilmer was before before, before George before Clooney, Clooney and and Val Kilmer's the best one before before Christian Bale. You think Val Kilmer was better than uh, Michael Keaton? Yeah. Oh, you are high. You are high at your ass. I like but, Michael Keaton, but I like the Val Kilmer movie. That was one of my favorite movies for so long. That was I saw that Batman movie in theaters so many times. Partially because I love Jim Carrey also. Mm. Uh, but I liked you know what I liked about that Batman? Is that Batman that Batman didn't go around killing people the way Michael Keaton did. Michael Keaton killed everybody. Just when he shoved a dynamite stick down a guy's <laughs> pants and pushed him down a manhole. Oh my god. When he when he showed you that that the Batmobile can stand up on a lift, turn around, land, and then light a man on fire with the jet engines. Yeah. I'm like, this guy doesn't give a fuck about killing people. Yeah. He does not. And so Very like while I, while I thought it was cool when I was a kid, the older I got and the more Batman I read the more I hated that. Like, I was like, why does he kill everybody? He just kills all of his bad guys. He kills the, he kills the Joker. He kills the penguin. I and mean, you could argue that he didn't actually kill, kill the, penguin. the penguin. The penguin died because the, he the got penguin accidentally Catwoman killed himself. Actually, no, the penguin, killed, actually... the penguin technically killed himself because Batman made the signal for all the missiles go back to the penguin. Yeah. So Batman killed him. Batman killed him. <laughs> Batman killed him. All right, come on. He killed him. I like, just look at it the, from a standpoint the, where it was like it was grounded in realism, but it wasn't a realistic movie. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. But like, like I, I, don't I, I don't I'm so tired. Like the problem I had is like Batman set the precedent for the next 20 years of bullshit that we comic book fans had to deal with, which is that Oh, for a movie, the villain has to die because if the, the villain knows who he is, he can't live, you know? And I'm like, and so every superhero movie after Michael Keaton's Batman, the villains always had to die. And it sucked. And like, and when you see the, you know, like uh, the X-Men is like the only exception because they're like, Magneto's too good. We can't kill him. We can't kill this guy. So we just keep bringing him I'm back. I think like what other superhero movies where the bad guy didn't die in that era in the Michael Keaton Batman era. No, I'm saying everything after Michael Keaton for like a long time. Like even on, b- before and after, like they didn't start like saving super like they didn't Do you know how many things. do you know how many Superman movies Gene, Gene Hackman is in? Uh he's all, in, all but of one of them. All yeah. but one. He's he's not he's in three. Three, three is bad. Three okay. is a bad movie. He's not in three. Yeah. Four is bad too, but he's in it. He's in it. You know why? Because okay. Superman don't go around killing his villains. But Superman can't kill Lex Luthor. It's uh, a. It's not. Yeah. A. It's Superman's not. He's the Boy Scout. And B. He didn't kill Zod. He didn't kill uh, the other two. I mean, he threw one down that hole. But I don't know what happened to them. Whatever. Maybe. Yeah, it's like a. It's like a bottomless pit. That pit but you know what, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's fine. But like, uh, superhero stories didn't necessarily uh they like that was a that was a writing a writing trope that was just established by bat because of batman which was like Mm. hmm the easiest way to like contractually not have to keep this villain around for the next three or four movies is have them die and then just never never talk about it again you know like actually I actually feel that they need to do a Batman story with Batman and Robin, but don't worry about the villains, the villains as much as the villains. Like, for instance, what I mean by that is oh, have no. it be ha- have it be a Batman and Robin story where Batman basically he meets like uh, Tim Drake and he. They he you see the conflict between them two where Tim Drake turns into Nightwing and you mean Dick Grayson Dick turns Grayson, into Nightwing. Sorry, sorry. Uh Dick Grayson turns into Nightwing and they show the conflict between them two, and then they come back at the end where now Dick Grayson is mad at Batman because he's 
bringing on a new Robin and all that. I, act, I actually really yeah, like, 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 I know this sounds weird, but I really like his arc in, in Batman forever and Batman and Robin. It's mm-hmm. just that those, that the, those movies are so campy yes. that you can't really appreciate it. But Chris O'Donnell, like he does, it does have a good arc in that. Like he starts, you know, as a circus performer, then his parents get killed by two face and then he wants revenge for two face. And Batman's trying to help him understand that vengeance doesn't solve anything. Mm-hmm. You can do that. You can do that again, but do mm-hmm. it with a, vi- a central villain that is, you know, is core to that growth, but have, Batman save Robin from the you know from that that mm-hmm. that peril, uh, and I think that honestly the Robert Pattinson movie has done the best job of setting up a believable Robin in the mm-hmm. future because of the creepy pedo vibes that he gives through the whole movie. Every time he stares at kids when their their dads are dead, I kind of feel like they were talking about that kid at the funeral as he's going to be the next Robin. Eh, the I don't was- think he is. If they don't, don't do know. Robin as a freaking gymnast, uh, gymnast, I'm pissed. I'm just done. Of course. Well, like, yeah. uh, like that was the biggest, the biggest painful thing about Chris Nolan's third movie is the way they shoehorned in a Robin. But I'm like, guys, if you don't have the balls to make Robin an actual kid, just don't mm-hmm. do it. Just don't do it. And so, like, you know, I think that 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 Matt Reeves might actually do a kid Robin. I and was, that might, that I would love cool. the aspect of robin basically being like the like being a like he's like google gaga over batman and then he realizes the anger inside of him is it the vengeance that batman is portraying batman uses vengeance as a tool like the like this as a scary tool but the but robin sees it as like a like the gift, like the per- like the thing that makes yeah, Batman. Well, he, Batman is that, but he then idolizes he realizes him until it. until yeah. yeah, until he doesn't, and then he realizes until he's in there with yeah. him, and then he realizes that it's that it's bullshit. The idea he had in his head was bullshit, but he can't let go of that bullshit. So he yeah. goes off and does his own thing, and then he realizes in like the either the end of the movie or the third act or the third movie, make it a trilogy. Where the third movie basically you have Robin basically going like, I we don't see eye to eye, but there are some things that he is doing that is good, that is correct, that is accurate, that is how it's supposed to work. Did Did you ever read? Excuse me. Did you ever read the Long Halloween? Uh, no. I was thinking the Killing Joke. Uh, no, I did not read the Long Halloween. I did read Killing Joke. That's what I was thinking when you said Long you Halloween. You should read the Long Halloween. It's it's my favorite Batman book ever. Okay. Um, and it's it's basically it's Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, uh, mm-hmm. doing the thing that they're famous for doing, which is retelling stories, but in a more in a more concise and more uh perfectly planned way where like everything's connected you know so like he tells he tells this really cool story of um like a year in the life of batman that starts on halloween Mm -hmm. and and it's what it was the inspiration for this movie for the batman but very this movie chose to just do um a week a week Mm -hmm. in the life of batman and and this story is a year in the life of batman and so it takes place over 12 months so it starts with Halloween, and then every month from then on, every every month somebody is killed on a holiday, and so oh, wow. you you have a holiday serial killing happening, and Batman's trying to solve it, but the but the problem is like it's so hard to solve that because all of his other villains keep getting in the way, so they keep you know they keep showing up, but it doesn't feel forced because you know you read one issue last month and now you're reading you now you're in December and yeah, mm-hmm. the Joker, the Joker's doing what Joker does, you know? And so Batman has to deal with the Joker, but also he's still trying to solve this murder. And so it just keeps escalating and escalating. So you get to see like his whole rogues gallery. Well, not his whole, like all the cool Wait, ones. Is all it the a 12 cool issue arc or? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a 12 issue arc. And so, uh, it takes place. It's kind of like the sequel to Frank Miller's Year One. Mm-hmm. So it uses all the characters that were in Year One. So like 
in year one, I don't know if you remember, but the commissioner was not Commissioner Gordon. It was Commissioner Loeb, the character okay. that they used. Uh, so mm-hmm. Commissioner Loeb is still the commissioner in this comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then eventually uh, through the story, I think I think Gordon might become the commissioner at the end, but I can't I can't remember. Uh, Wait, but then have they said they're gonna do a three movie yeah. arc with this one? Or, okay. Yeah, they are. They are. But then uh so then they follow that that comic was so popular, so successful that they had him come back for another 12 issue comic called Dark Victory. Mm-hmm. And Dark Victory is really cool because it does the same thing again where it's like, let's do another 12 issue story that follows from this one. And like this, the villain is kind of like a copycat killer of the one from the previous year, but they work in the origin of Robin into the story as well. And mm. it's really, it's really fun to watch. And then like, uh, this is also the story, like these two stories are also where they start planting the seeds that, uh, Catwoman is trying to find out that her, or trying to uncover the truth about her father being Carmine Falcone and stuff. So like all of that mm. is from these books. Um, so if you ever read the Long Halloween and Dark Victory, you'll see how much they just t- stole from it, but didn't do it as cool because, like, you know, I got uh, to see the Batman fight. That was down right now. The Long Halloween, the Long Halloween, and then Dark Victory. Yeah, and then the sequel to those is Batman Hush. Oh, okay. I read like, te- Hush. like technically. Like, so Hush, it continues. So basically, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale did three books. They did those two Batman books, and then they did a spinoff book, which was Catwoman Win in Rome. Mm -hmm. And in every one of those stories, the Riddler is a stooge. He is just like, he is the laughing stock of all of the villains. Like, he gets bitched so hard. And so by the third book, which is Catwoman Win in Rome, he's like Catwoman's sidekick. And they actually go to Rome to try and find more, uh, more find out more about her family lineage, right? And so it's not until Hush, which is supposed to be kind of a sequel to all three of those stories, that you find out that the Riddler is, you know, has been underestimated by everybody, and he actually figured out Batman's identity, you know, like before anybody else did and stuff like that. Um, so I really like those books because they. <laughs> they play the Riddler as a fool for like years and years and years before, before revealing his greatness. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I don't. I felt like this movie just kind of cheaped me out because they just made the Riddler into Jigsaw from Saw. Like he's just well, Jigsaw. The one thing I've also understood is that when you have a bunch of badass like characters. One of them sooner or later is going to have to be the the butt of the joke, the, right? Yeah, the butt of the joke, basically. Yeah, yeah, and that's what the Riddler was until he wasn't, right? And like, and it was, it was a, it was a cool thing if you ever read those. But I highly recommend the Long Halloween. It is my favorite Batman comic of all time. Uh, the art is beautiful. The story is really fun, um, and it's it's and it's it, it hits a lot of the. It hit, it's a very all-encompassing Batman book while also creating a villain that didn't exist before in the comics. You know what I mean? Um, it's pretty cool. I am ordering it right now. Yeah. Um, Dark, Victory is, Dark Victory is really good. It's not as good as Long Halloween, but the, but the origin of Robin is really well done. It's very cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, they made they made the long Halloween into an animated movie, and it is poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> it is just not it is not nearly as good. It it hurt it hurt my feelings a lot to watch it. Like I was, I I haven't enjoyed a lot of the DC animated in the last five six seven years. I They've honestly, bad. I don't watch a lot of the DC animated stuff now. The stuff on HBO Max. Like I watched the well Harley Quinn. Well, that's the thing. Right. Yeah, but that's like the best thing. <laughs> that's like one of the best shows ever. Period. Like best comic book shows. Yeah, it's I watched good. it. It's so I good. liked it because I liked that one because they literally made her. 
popular. They made her like one of those like fuck it characters. Like I don't care about. And they also leaned into the Bane joke, which is so yeah. good. Like Bane is like one of the best characters on that show. He's mm -hmm. so hilarious. Yeah, I love that show so much that I can't wait for it to come back. They promise it's coming back this year. They don't. They have not said when, but they have promised it's coming back this year. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a success. If, if for nothing else, then I got you to buy two of my favorite comics. Yeah, it's, I just bought it. It was good. It was good. I, um, well, but, I, I had to. So you're a bachelor this weekend, huh? I am a huge bachelor. Val is in Portland doing the girls weekend. Having mm -hmm. uh, rock, out, rock out fun time. And I am babysitting the dog. I can't believe you didn't play D and D yesterday just because you couldn't get the cord, the cord in time. You gotta understand. Look, you, I wish you see my setup because the setup I have three monitors in front of me, like it's yeah. all mapped out the way it should be. And I am on this side of the uh, of the office, and the cord I had ran and stopped. It just ran along this wall, and it stopped right there. And for it to get over here. To my computer that's right here to try and get it, it i tried to run it yesterday and it got to like right on like right at the tip of my desk where i was mm -hmm. like for me to even do anything to get my computer to go over there to make it work the plug where to plug in the computer would be too far away so i was like Okay, I'm. I literally, I, I was getting irritated because I didn't map all this out when I said, "Fuck it, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna redo my whole office." And because once crunch time was over, I knew I needed something different in this office, or yeah. else I would just go crazy again if I had to go through another year of crunch time in this office. And uh, so I moved everything, and I didn't place think how like honestly amazon loves me this week but I, I love that you i love that you did that on wednesday before 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 dnd no 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 i did this on monday oh my god i started on monday i got to the portion where it was the computer moving the computer on wednesday that was the portion when i did it and when i did i was already frustrated with everything because i had already hurt my back because I was trying to move a bookshelf <laughs> that had books in it, and I jacked up my back, and I was like, oh, I was so frustrated with everything. So when I saw that whole thing happen, I was just like, and then on top of that, I had a, I know for a fact, I bought a 50-foot cord, which would have been totally fine in here. I couldn't find it when I, to set everything up. And then when the cord came, the cord showed up at 9 o'clock last night, Ryan called me and I was just like, yo, do you remember what I did with that 50 foot cord? He was like, oh, I have it. I was like, I could have gone to your house again. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know he had it. I gave yeah. him the 50 foot cord. So, yeah. but hey, I will be at DD next week because as you can see, the computer set up. So I'll be at DD next week. All right. Week. We didn't I, quite finish the, 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 the last night's uh, story, anyways. So like we're still kind of at a, a standing point. Like um, we went into another mirror to get another part. Okay. But like it so it slowly became. It started looking like Brian was gonna make us talk again, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the one who did it because I was like I felt like I had my moment and it was fun. I don't need to do it again. So I just let Ricky talk instead, and then it got real bad real quick because he was just like stupid, and then. <laughs> And then, and like he was like asking, he's like, Brian, can what happens if I like just sneak around behind her and kill her right now? And we're like surrounded by like thirty people, and he wants to kill somebody. Like, <laughs> while we're, we're like, what happens? Is, like Oliver got mad because Oliver came back to play too, and he's like, why don't you even come here? Like he was so mad at him. Uh, but we convinced Ricky not to do that, and then at some point, Clark kind of started doing the talking. And it was just a lot of talking going on before we finally resolved it. And so we we were the basically we we met a group of elves that were trapped on this planet 
where the magic was dying and the only source of magic was the the machine part that we needed to take and so we promised like that we would they I, apparently they have a prophecy of going like of, of forming a new home on another on another place that happens to be the one that we wrecked last week or, or two weeks ago whatever that oh. that one they're supposed to they they think that they're prophesized to live there and so they're like is, is magic there and we're like yeah magic works there but those people suck you don't want to you don't want to be there but they're like no 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 we don't care about the people we want to go can you help us get there and we're like i guess like can you come through with us like you can come through our portal and then go through another one and that's up to you whatever you know so we were just negotiating that and so we we came through the portal uh back to the room with the machine and there was all these bad guys brian had there so like we got ambushed, so then we started. We just had to fight. So we just finished the fight and didn't get to like resolve anything. So we still don't have the part, and we still have to like. And accidentally, we got the queen killed in the process. So that's I'm, probably bad. That's probably bad. I am definitely there next week because yeah. next week I I don't have much. All I have left to do in this office now is just a little bit of cleanup. And putting things away, and I plan on doing that yeah. this weekend. And so I will be set up for everything. But as of... let me ask you this: Do you do you enjoy it? Do you like it when you play with us? I like D and D. I like playing with you guys. It's fun. I still feel like I am definitely the noob trying to figure out everything. Yeah, you're the noob, but like other people had never played really before too. It's just like. You just get used to it over time. Like the 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 trick is, I think that here's the real thing to remember. Like, and, and I think I think it's funny because I think some people still don't get it. But Brian is not the bad guy. He 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 shows up every Thursday night because he wants to have fun with us, mm-hmm. right? He wants to he wants to see us succeed. And I think there are two different types of DMs that you can have in, in when you play DD. You mm. can have the ones that want you to succeed and you can have the ones that want you to be punished okay. and, and the punishing ones, that's not, that's not fun, you know, because, because they, they want to do everything they can to, to stop you from, from succeeding so that when you do succeed, you feel really good about it. You know what I mean? But like, but it's, that's not a satisfying story, right? Especially if it doesn't go well. I do have, uh, uh, I do have a question. Uh, when it comes to D and D, a is there a limit to how high the levels can go? Uh, I don't know that m- many campaigns go past twenty. Wait, aren't you like aren't you higher than twenty? No, uh, we're, we're we're seventeen. We're seventeen. Okay, but okay. Brian's also admitted that you know he's. He's we're coming up upon the last few maybe months of this one, right? Like, like so he has asked us in the past, like to start brainstorming what kind of things we want to do in the future. So we might we might be starting brand new, you know, before the end of the year. Okay, uh, or even before by the summer. I think probably by the summer we could be done with this campaign, and and so the campaign was a good training wheels for you because you get to like learn a little but like, Mm -hmm. but you know, but there is a benefit to starting from scratch for a whole team because then you're all experiencing it together. Right. You're all, when we start from scratch, do we create new characters? Usually, usually. Yeah. But like, you know, uh, it also depends on how this ends. Like if your character makes it through, it doesn't mean that's the end of your, for your character. It might, you know, uh, generally in the past. So like, I think the funny thing about Brian is I think he definitely, he has better games in him, but he admitted that when he started this one with us last year, he didn't think the group would take it very seriously. So he literally just pulled out an old story that he had used, he'd run before an old campaign. He'd run way back with another group before. Um, so I think, now that he's seen, you know, that we probably have the appetite for a little bit more, I think another campaign with him would be better because 
Uh, you know, it was a lot of people to cater to that a lot that he'd never played with before. He never played with Coker. He never played with mm-hmm. Oliver. Never played with Lindsay. Never played with Ricky. Uh, he pretty much just played with Michi and Clark in the past. Okay. Uh, so, and he and and the and when I say the past, that was in college, and I, I was a shitty person to play D and D with because I, <laughs> I, I thought D and D was still something to make fun of. So I made it my personal goal to to always challenge Brian and always make his life difficult by like mm-hmm. if he had planned for something cool for us to do, I'd be like, I want to go that way instead. You know, like and and like I would just want to I would always do the thing that was the opposite. I was the Ricky of the group, like, you know, <laughs> which is really funny to see that Ricky does that now because it's like, oh, yeah. That's why I don't get mad at it because I'm like, I see it. He's always had to deal with somebody like this. The one thing I I'm learning is that when you it to me it'd probably be easier to create a character in the beginning of a campaign because creating a character not in the beginning of a campaign and just like in the middle of a campaign, I kind of feel like me stressing over like all this stuff with the backstory, I don't feel like it means jack and shit. Yeah, see, that's the that's the other trick is like at some point Lindsay was saying that Brian admitted that because he used the old campaign like that he'd done before, he didn't really do a lot to integrate our backstories into it. And so we have backstories that haven't really been referenced, but it's not to say that he yeah. can't do it. He's done it before in other games that we've played. And what like, about, like, are there any moments where you meet, like, people you've known in other storylines or? In the in the campaign we've played for the last year, no. In 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 old ones that I play with Brian, yes. Mm-hmm. And so okay. I think, I think, uh, I think this was, one, it was a much needed diversion. You know, like, we went, we survived a whole fucking year of pandemic not playing D D and I finally was like, why are we not playing D D? Because this is like seems like a thing we should be doing. And so we started it last like March or January or February, like last February. And you know, people were all about it because we were still stuck at home mm-hmm. and we still we still wanted to hang out, but we could, you know, and so like this gave us something fun to do because I have a lot of friends that are not gamers really they don't really like to to play video games as much as i do or clark does uh and so i need to find other things for my friends to do with us that are games but a little bit more you know interactive it's really weird the reason i always wanted to start DD was because i need i just wanted to get ideas yeah no i know i'm writing and stuff like yeah and in my mind like for like Right now, I still kind of feel like I'm like the guy walking into the middle of a movie, trying to you understand are. what's going on. You are, you you are, and you're not going to get like a full, satisfying story arc. I think in the way that mm-hmm. you would hope you would, but you are, you are literally like that guy that showed up, uh, way late in the story, and and is now suddenly like you know, thrust into all this action. And you're like, you know what you're kind of like? You're like Gannicus in that, that extra season of Spartacus mm-hmm. when, when, uh, when the guy had to go away for a while because of his cancer mm-hmm. and, and stars wanted to keep the show going. So they just made a filler season about a totally different character named Gannicus. And you're like, okay, I guess this is cool, but like, is, is this going to matter to the story? You know, like, and then when the when the show finally picked back up, they found a way to like squeeze Gannicus into the story, but it never he never mattered in the same way that Spartacus mm-hmm. or Crixus does. You know, you saw that show, right? Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but Gannicus gets to have his own little story in there, you know. So whatever, it's cool. But yeah, I think for sure, like starting the story from the beginning is is way cooler. Uh, but I I will say that like the story itself that we've done. It's mostly we've just been like dealing with this weird group named RSL who mm-hmm. are worse pirates than us and want pow- absolute power. And through the process, we've met 
you know, the people that are the, the acronym RSL and we have to mm-hmm. fight them and beat them. So we're on the, we're on the L part of it. That's, that's where we are. We already I, did the R and the S and now we're on the L. I honestly did not know there was a bigger story in our thing. I literally thought every I mean, week we can't we came through and we played. It was us just playing different campaigns. No, no, no. It's it's an overarching story. Like we, you know, we've done, we've made choices along the way. We formed, we created a brothel. We have uh-huh. a full, we have a full on brothel that we run. Uh, we did an entire night of just brothel management. It was pretty funny. Like it was. <laughs> it, like it was not no fighting at all. We just went shopping around the city to buy all the things we needed. And then we set up the brothel. We hired people and it was hilarious. With with the essence of this brothel that we have, like how does that work into our storyline? Do we work? And if we start a new campaign, do we have to redo all the money stuff? Yes, it, um, if we're different characters, we would have different money. Um, in, in most likely, but like that's kind of the fun part of it, right? When we started, we were broke, and like it took us weeks and weeks and weeks before one day we were just rich, and we're like, mm-hmm. "Whoa, now we're rich." The problem <laughs> is Brian made us so rich that we've just never not been rich ever since, <laughs> and like and like it was it. We went from being poor to being super rich, like super rich. And then we were assholes because, like, we literally took the money and rolled it into more money by, like, we did one night where we just took a grip of money and we went to the arena in the city and mm-hmm. we made Oliver go and just beat the shit out of everything. And we all bet, like, like 50000 on him each. We each bet 50000 on him and watched him win. And then we just, we ended up even more millionaires than we were before. And so, like, whenever we're bored or we're, or not bored, but whenever we don't know what we want to do, or we, or we just feel like fucking around, we go back to the arena and we just fight and bet on ourselves. And so, we just got so much money from a couple times where we did that, so that it's it's it it became broken in the way that Japanese RPGs become broken when you reach that point where you're just so rich that you never have to worry about whatever you want ever again, you know. Now, when you go to the arena, the people you fight that week, are they like that week that you just run through? Yeah, yeah. He always gives us new monsters every week, you know, or every time we do it. Like it's it's new. He just picks monsters. He like the the beauty of of, of Brian running that is he knows D and D so well that he can just he can just conjure up whatever from his his knowledge of the of the game. You know, like. Uh, I will say, you know, he definitely decided to go a little lazier on the story uh, <laughs> because he wasn't sure how we would all, you know, how we would all work together and stuff like that. But okay. now that he's seen, you know, now that he's seen clearly like Coker can take it pretty damn seriously. You know, Clark can take it seriously. Lindsay can take it seriously. Uh, you know, I can take it seriously, apparently, after the, the one we did two weeks ago. I surprised myself a little bit on that one, but I was just, but I, I think the, the, the thing that I did last time, which, which was what, you know, I took over and kind of just made the story move along is I felt like we were all stuck in, in not realizing that our DM is our advocate. He -hmm. wants us to have fun. He knows that we only get to hang out for two hours a night and he wants us to succeed. And so like, I thought it was funny that everybody was sitting around deliberating on like, what should we do? What should we do? And that's why I adopted the, the strategy, which is, hi, I'm Dennis. You know, I just go and introduce myself to the bad guy uh, because it moves the plot along. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, do you remember that scene in Deadpool where, where he's talking to TJ Miller and there's that guy in the corner that wants to, like, talk to Wade because, mm-hmm. like, he wants to talk to him about the, the Deadpool or the, the Weapon X program or whatever it is? Mm-hmm. And TJ Miller says to him, he's like, hey, why don't you go over there and further the plot? And it's such a <laughs> it's it's such a fourth wall breaking thing to say, but it's the truth, right? Like at that point in the story, 
Deadpool has to go over there so that he can become Deadpool five minutes or ten minutes later. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We need to make the story move because we don't want this thing to be a three-hour story. You know, we want it. We want it to be two hours. And so when sometimes you know when the night starts, everybody's you know had their whole work day, whatever. They're just like a little flustered or a little tired or whatever. And so we just sit around meandering for a bit, saying like, "Well, I don't know what what should we do?" And I. I just know that Brian, if you just trust in Brian, no matter what thing we do, it's going to be more exciting than us sitting around saying, what should yeah, we what do? Should we do? Yeah. Yeah. So just take the bull by the horns and choose something to do. Do something. I, I'm, I'm learning, like, for instance, the one we did two weeks ago, it was, like, I'm learning, like, we need to just do things this is why i put on the cloak of invisibility and i walked yeah. around while you guys were talking to yeah. just see kind of distractions i can do in case we need to do a distraction yeah when i was in college if uh if i got bored with how long it took people to deliberate i would just go have sex with things <laughs> like like <laughs> <laughs> that's what i would do i'd be like okay i'm having sex with this goblin now and they're like what and i was like you guys took too long i'm having sex with a goblin you know like and so i feel like this is the mature more grown-up way of me doing it is now i just go and introduce myself to the bad guy and that makes the story go faster and and mm-hmm. it's not like it's not like he's gonna party wipe us unless he's having a really bad day he's not gonna kill us all mm-hmm. he's not he's not gonna do it so like just trust trust that he's he's your he's your number one fan and just do the things that you think would be cool to do you know what i mean so like, far i'm i'm digging everything that we've been doing so far i'm i'm still in a place where i'm just like i'm learning so i'm like mm, let's see how it goes let's see where it goes yeah but no i like i like D&D and i i i think it's i think it's a fun way to let off some steam or 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 try being the person that you don't normally be in your real life you know like it's mm-hmm. it's fun you know like we have we have another patron uh dave that he he's i think he's just kind of so tired of not not doing something cool with us on on thursday nights that he wants to try it as well and and i told him yeah you should you know like, like his thursdays aren't always free but like um but it's uh, it's definitely something like I recommend it for anybody who's never tried tried it before, just mm-hmm. because like, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You spent two mm-hmm. hours rolling dice, and mm-hmm. you did and you didn't have fun. Okay, whatever. At least you didn't, you know, like nothing bad happened to you. You just you just learned that that's not what you like to do. But like, if it is something <laughs> you like to do, and you realize that the sky's the limit, and you really can do anything, but just recognize that if you choose to do anything the other people in the room with you might get very mad at you if the anything you do is Mm -hmm. is upsetting to them you know and you just deal with that you know like but it's funny it's funny you know like and if you happen to do something really funny that just makes people like want to do more of that that's cool too but if you have people that want to like really see what happens with the story and they want to you know become a character that's cool too like i don't i don't know I think it's fun to see what what people become like when mm. they're playing when they're playing it, you know. So like I, I like that I get to see Coker be this tiny little eight eight inch archer that loves loves his animal and loves to like just kill things now, with bows and arrows all the time. And how did he get an animal? Because I want an animal. I want to get a sidekick it's, animal. It's it's the class. It's a class okay. thing. Like you have to choose a class that has animals. There's several. There's several classes that have them, um, but he it came it it was part of the kit. It it came okay. with, it came with the character. Yeah, no. I think the the ranger just gets it an animal. Okay, out of curiosity, and this kind of off off subject. And if you want to talk about it on here, you don't have to. It's fine. We'll I, talk I, about I, we talk about anything yeah. here. That's the whole point of this. Is just we talk about whatever, and if people like listening to what we nerd out on, that's cool. That's I'm, fine. I'm just curious, like, how is this whole like podcast YouTuber thing working out for you? Like, how is it doing? Is it um, good? Is it growing? Is it getting better? Uh, is it- 
it, it reached it reached i mean well one it reached a stopping point where like you know i got up in like the the uh close to 700 which mm -hmm. is really crazy but like to be fair i didn't get most of those 700 from the podcast Okay. I got them from making toy videos uh, two years ago. I okay. made a lot of I made a lot of toy videos, and um, they like I have one that's like ninety thousand views or something like that, and it's pretty crazy. Oh, good. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. And what was crazy is it was my first one. It was my first video, uh, and I've never been able to achieve the success of that first video, which is actually the story of a lot of people on YouTube. Uh, but what I decided is like that the problem with the toy videos is at the time, the way I was doing them was unsustainable. Uh, I was burning myself out because it was a lot. It was a lot of uh, photography. It was a lot of setting up stuff. It was a lot of video editing. It was it was a lot. It was a lot of things I was doing and I was trying to do <laughs> one, a, one a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was. Um, it was exhausting. And, and so what I found was like the thing I, I also enjoyed doing was I like having something to do where I get to chat with my friends on, on a Friday night or whatever about nerdy shit, you know, that we, we are, that we're all watching. Let's not pretend we're not all watching it and we don't all want to talk about those things, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I, it's not that I, I didn't mean to pivot to this. It's just that I, I was doing both at the same time. And one was way easier to do than the other. And so, oh, you know, and so then, so when I started doing this more and more regularly, I started, you know, losing some people who, who are subscribing because they're like, that's not toy videos. And then I started gaining some that were like, yeah, I like to see this too, you know? So um, it's not about like the podcast is not about me trying to blow up and become this crazy personality that, that, that is going to be the next person whatever you know like the next uh uh kind of fun you know kind of funny or whatever like i'm not trying to do that i'm trying to i'm trying to say at a minimum while i figure out how to do the toy videos to be more sustainable or create whatever it else it is at a minimum i promise that you'll always at least get to check in with me every friday night on whatever i've got you know going on and whether or not that's what you like that's okay. I don't mind because I have fun because I get to invite my friends to come and hang out and talk about the shit I do. Now so, the toy videos, how long were they? Like how long was the length? Of, uh, uh, about, uh, about, uh, 30 to 45 seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's why it was hard. It's because like, uh, it was a lot of editing to make them that short. Um, oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand the essence of, Making something short being more complicated, doing yeah. doing yeah. scripts for shorter. Yeah, because I was writing, I was writing harder. stuff for them, but uh, the way I was doing it is, uh, and I still want to do it. Don't, don't get me wrong; like uh, there was other things that made me stop in the in the process, and and uh, I've I've been setting up my office to once again go back to doing them, uh, but finding a way to be a little bit more efficient or a little bit have more of like a template. Or you know, uh, slightly less production value, but more, more, more doable. You know what I mean? Like less, less of a burden mm -hmm. on me. But the the way I was doing it is because, like, I you know, I collect Marvel Legends for I, twenty years now. I've been collecting them, and um, I was always collecting them for me. Mm -hmm. But at at a certain point, I realized I think I have more Marvel Legends than most human beings on this planet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I just, I, I do. I think the more and more I started getting involved in groups, the more I started realizing like, well, there's a lot of people that are just like starting or complaining about how hard it is to get the old ones. And I just, ha I just have them all. Like I just, the only ones I don't have are ones that I've sold because they suck now or whatever, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I usually, I replace I, like, like that Moon Knight figure. I had older Moon Knight figures that by comparison to this new one, look like shit so i sell the old ones i keep the new one right uh but for the most part you still part, make I, good money on the old ones yeah i do i do and it's really weird uh mm -hmm. but it's because it's uh it's because the company that used to make them when they first started uh went super detailed in painting 
It's just the articulation scheme was a little toy looking. It didn't it didn't necessarily have the best human proportions sometimes. Mm. But they were really well painted. And so there's a market because a lot of people still prefer the older ones. But like when Hasbro took over, Hasbro was all about like how do we make them easier to make and and less less unique you know what i mean because mm-hmm. like because like for example spider-man the old toys they used to actually uh in the molds they would carve spider-man's webs into the, into his body so it was textured right so it mm-hmm. looked he had texture and it looked cool because it looked like you know that this toy was never going to be anything else other than a spider-man toy it was made specifically but that's not that's not efficient, right? You can't reuse that mold a million times over. So like when Hasbro took over the company, they were like, if you just paint the stuff on them, you can make Daredevil also Captain America and also the Black Panther. And also that, you know, you just change the color of the plastic and the color of the paint. Uh, And so a lot of people don't like that Hasbro found ways to like, crank out characters faster and and more and and more you know like a great a greater variety of characters because they sacrificed a little bit in the uh quality the the, the detail the detail okay. department you know what i mean but uh over the over the years they've built they built up a library of parts so that they still they still get to do more and more so like i like them and i think they're putting out the best stuff they've ever put out in these last few years and so what it made me realize is like, man, I really love these so much that like I gave up collecting everything else. Like I just, I stopped. Well, one, cause it was like, I can't collect other things. This is like, <clears throat> you don't understand. Like I have too many, like too many. I, I understand because of my statue collection. Yeah, like, Literally yeah. it gets to a point where like I, I, right now I'm, I limit myself now to if, if I get a statue, it's one a year, and that's if I get a statue. Like right now, I'm not even. I haven't gone on sideshow because yeah. I don't want to get coaxed into buying another statue. And like, I'm in the process of. I purchased this this uh, all four turtles, uh, all four Ninja Turtles, a whole, the whole set, but because of COVID. They're all being shipped from Japan, and yeah. now they only come out. Now you can only get them one at a time, even though I paid for all four. Yeah, yeah. So uh, right now, I think I'm. I got Leonardo. I got Raphael. Michelangelo's next, and that when I talked to the guy on Facebook, he said if the Michelangelo comes in like July or August or something like that, and then Donatello doesn't come till like December, January. So yeah. I'm like I'm in a place where I'm just like okay I paid a lot of money for all four of these, and it literally is taking almost three years to get all four of them. And then the jacked up part is that the guy the guy kind of screwed me because he showed me a picture of Splinter, which is the next one after Turtles, and I was like, well Shredder is technically the next one after Turtles, but. I didn't like the mold that they did Shredder. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to buy Shredder. But then I saw Splinter. I was just like, damn it. Yeah. Do I want to pay the money for Splinter? Oh. <laughs> of, course, of course you do. I do. But but yeah. I, the thing I've noticed is that I literally ran out of space. I have, I don't even know where I'm going to put the other two turtles. I really don't know where I'm going to put them. Yeah. Yeah. I ran out so, of space. So that that's the thing is like the, the further I got into this collection, the more I started having to do weird things, like uh, for space reasons, uh, we had to invent a storage solution that's pretty cool. Like I actually have drawers with like uh, wiring that goes under their armpits so that they can stand in single file rows uh, so that I can keep them. So I have alphabetized my whole collection in in drawers. (laughs) Uh, and, And I don't ever display all of them because like one, I don't, like believe in displaying all of them all at once because like it's like 800 character 800 figures mm-hmm. and or maybe 700 at the because I, I i it's hard to keep track of how many i have because i i sell you know like i like it's gotten to the point like 
uh, there was one year I sold a hundred, a hundred figures, uh, just because I realized they had remade so many of them and I'd just be been hanging on to them. Uh, and I was like, I don't like these ones anymore. And so when I finally broke and let myself get rid of the old, it was like a hundred figures that I got rid of and it was pretty nuts. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, high, low, like what is the average high number was average low number? And you don't have to give me specifics. Just. What is the average high number you sold for? What is the average low number you sold for? Average high number. Well, there's exclusives that I sell. I think um, I sold one a couple about two months ago for like 140 bucks. Oh wow! Okay. Um, and then average low is like uh, if I I'll pack them if if I know they're not worth like a lot a lot, I'll pack them in a group to sell mm -hmm. them as a bundle. Like I'll sell like a whole. Like maybe I'll curate, like I'll put a whole team of Avengers together, right? And I'll okay. sell an event, an Avengers team, and I'll probably sell each of them for. Or I mean, as a total, they'll probably come out to like eighteen bucks a piece. Okay, you know, um, and, but and you but, do this on eBay, right? But I'll sell them for like you know, I'll sell like eight of them, so for like it'll be like one hundred and fifty for the whole set of them or something. Like that. Okay, and you yeah. do this on eBay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I think I'm going to switch to Mercari because eBay's getting a little expensive nowadays. I don't even know no. what Mercari is. Honestly, Mercari's I, Mercari's a newer one. It's just a any, newer one. Anything I saw now is on OfferUp. Yeah, I don't like OfferUp because I don't want to deal with actual meeting people. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't mind meeting people. Is one of those. I don't, things. I don't it, want to. the don't only want to. the only portion of meeting people that is actually kind of sketchy is when. Offer up, it does like I remember I was selling like an art table, and this guy was just I was selling an art table for forty bucks, and the guy asked me, he was like, "Hey, would you would you take thirty dollars?" I was like, "No, not really, but you know, if you come get it today, I don't really want to sell for thirty bucks, but I will sell for thirty bucks if you come today." He was like, "Yeah, okay, then how about this? Can you deliver it to my house because I don't have a car and I'll pay you the full forty? And I was like, "No, I'm not gonna." Yeah, I, yeah, I'm see, selling that... for forty. Yeah, see, that's the thing is like, uh, I'm also in a in a, a situation with these figures where it's like, it's not that I'm in an urgent need to sell them. Mm. It's that I've gotten all the fun I'm going to get out of these figure, these specific ones. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to let somebody else have fun with them. So mm. I rarely entertain low ball offers. Because I'm like, eh, I'm not really in an urgent need to sell it. So, no, mm -hmm. I, I don't take your offer. You know what I mean? So I'm patient enough that I can leave these auctions up for a long time. And eventually somebody wants them. You know what I mean? Somebody mm -hmm. always does. There, there, that Like one time that I told you uh, where I sold 100, I think like 80 of them went to one guy. Because oh, yeah. he was he was somewhere in uh, South America. And, and there was a really big... Uh, need or like a really big you know the popularity for these toys in south america so he was buying them to resell them there because they're hard to find they're come by there and i was fine with what he paid me with them and i was like man if you can get more for them more power to you go for it but he paid me good and so you know i made like i made like 1500 bucks selling my old toys that i didn't that i didn't want anymore you know what i mean um uh, well, yeah. and that's that's crazy, I laugh, right? I laugh because I have all these old toys in here, and I'm just sitting there going, like, who would want half of this shit? Exactly, but they do. Like, they do, and, like, that's yeah. that's the thing. And so that's kind of what, what happened was, like, I realized that I was in such a this cool place of privilege of having all these because I just – I stuck to it. I always collected them. And so I started joining more of the communities because I wanted to see, like, what do other people got, you know, like, and, and so when I started joining groups and stuff like that and seeing like, Oh, oh that's all you got. Okay. Like I have way more and I don't ever show them. Like I I'm always afraid mm -hmm. to like do that, you know, but I know I'm fine with knowing what I've got, but it just got to a point where I started like, you know, through the collecting groups, I started seeing, oh, there's people that do reviews of these figures. And I started watching the reviews. And while I like them and I love the enthusiasm that comes from these people, what I started noticing was something that really annoyed me is that everybody takes 15 to 30 minutes 
to talk about one toy. Mm. And I'm like, bro, nobody needs to hear you talk for 15 to 20 Mm. minutes or three minutes about one toy. And I was like, the reality is anybody who's on the fence about buying a toy wants to know specific things. And you could break those things down really quick. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I kind of got the idea. What if I was the guy that just circumvented that whole process, that whole thing, and instead cranked out 30 minute, sorry, 30 second or 30 second reviews that were basically not me talking because I don't want to like sometimes I don't want to hear these guys talk about their toys. Mm-hmm. And and it's and it's just set to music. It's mm-hmm. just set to music and it's me showing you the features of the figure, showing you how cool it looks, and showing you things you could do with it. And that's it. And I can do that in 30 seconds. And I did that with a Spider-Man toy. And Spider-Man happens to be the most popular superhero in the planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so people love the shit out of that video. And so I did more. I did, I did, I kept I kept doing more in that wave. And not a single one ever did as well as that video. Because they're not Spider-Man. You know, I did an electro, I did a I did now, a level, I did you know, the- all these other with the fact that they didn't do as well as the Spider-Man one, did they even come close? Like, was it like uh, ninety thousand, uh, and then the not, next one was, was like, like one? The, no, the next one was like fifteen thousand or something like okay. that. But then, but then other ones are like three hundred, or other ones are like forty or something like that. You know what I mean? It's pretty, it's pretty wild. Um, but like, I think it's not that I didn't like doing it. I really do. I love doing it. Um, I just think that I hadn't quite figured out how I wanted to do it in a very um, res- way, in a way that was respectful, respectful to my time and my resources. And so I had this idea back then that was like, okay, I got to show the box. I got to show the box from front, back, side, side, top, bottom. Then I got to show you the figure right out of the box. And I got to show you all of the accessories. Then I got to show you what the figure looks like when you have it with different accessories. And then I got to show you what this figure's accessories look like if you put them on other figures. Then I got to show you what this figure looks like standing in other figures. And it, it just became a shot list that was really long. And mm-hmm. then and then what it turned into is, uh, you know, I, I was like, okay, if I'm going to show you what you could do with this, that means I got to show you a really overproduced high quality photo that I do where I set up all my shit, get other toys out, get a cool diorama going. And then I light it up really nice movie style and I take a picture and that's how I end it. And that was just too much to do, you know? So like, I I think, I think I actually didn't do that for the first few. I think I just did it on white backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I thought that I could outdo myself mm-hmm. by over by by doing more, and so I think I there's a sweet simplicity to the Spider-Man one that I grew away from, and 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 the more and more I kept doing more stuff, the more I liked doing it, but the more it exhausted me, and and to the point where like I have other videos that are I think way better than the Spider-Man one that have done okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, but god damn they took so much of my 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 week you know like it just took so much of me (laughs) to do a 30 second video you took on average like what like a week or three days um probably probably three to four days three three to four days yeah and uh and that's because of you know you're messing with physical objects like you gotta I got to pose the toys I gotta set up the, 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 the scene I gotta set up the lighting I got to get the photos I need, you know, and then once I, okay. I get, the, I get videos I need too, cause I'm doing video and, and photos. And then I got to like edit that all uh, and, and make, and then I write, I write, like there are words, I write stuff to it. So you can read, you can read little blurbs about each thing as you're seeing the next screens, you know, but it was, it was all meant to be a very short attention span kind of theater thing. We're like, cause I know the kids in this generation, like, do not want yeah they're very quick you know and so 
uh, it was funny because one of my friends, you know, Oliver, he watched one of my videos one time and he's like, I think if you're, I think it's, I think I, it's a little too fast because I can read something, but I can't like see everything that I want to see at the same time because I'm reading it. He's like, you, maybe you should just slow him down. I'm like, or does that force you to rewatch the video more than once? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, that's a good point. It's a good point. You know, so uh, that's how I, I that's how I try to go about doing it, you know. But then the uh, the other part that's tricky is like it's hard to monetize on a 30 second video. Oh, really? Be because because uh, net, uh, I mean, YouTube's going to put like a 15, 20 second commercial on there if if you get if you get to the point where you're monetizing. So do you know how obnoxious that is to have a 15 to 20 second commercial now, in, the, in the middle of a 30 second video? How, how does that work for those commercials in the beginning of the video? Would Like after five seconds, you can click skip. Uh, I mean, it, it all depends on like, I think that's a net, uh, sorry, YouTube algorithm where they determine. So one, your video only qualifies to be monetized if it's met a certain set of, 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 of requirements beforehand. And that has to do with the account. Mm -hmm. So, so the account has to have um, several things. It has to have a certain number of subscribers and it has to have a certain amount of hours viewed per year. And mm -hmm. so like it's, it's a lot of hours per year, uh, you know, so like that's, the essential reason why we started doing the podcast is okay. because it was unsustainable for me to do, to get like uh, thousands of hours of people viewing when it's 30 second videos, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But if I do a podcast where Ricky and I just shoot the shit for an hour and 45 minutes and then I do another show where I, there's no limit to how long we can go. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, for now, that second show, you know, we hide it behind a wall for a little bit, but eventually we put it out there. Then I get one person to watch one podcast. That's the equivalent of how many people watching one 30 second video. You know what I mean? Hmm. Uh, so it's, it's me kind of like having, the the podcast is meant to be like a a fun extra thing that I do. You know what I mean? So like it doesn't I don't care if it ever if it ever takes off or whatever. Like the point is that it helps me it helps me maintain a level of consistency on YouTube so that I never stop altogether. Because I did stop making my toy videos because it, it just got it got it was burnt out for a little while, and then I was also doing a a, a photo project with Nas at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I was doing a photo project, a photo series with Nas. I was doing toy videos, and I was doing podcast, and and I wasn't sure that those were all things I wanted to do. And so eventually, I burnt out. But I said, I'm never so burnt out that I can't just shoot the shit about the TV no. show that I watch. You know what I mean? So. Now, yeah. Next next question. Now this is turning into like, how do you build your channel video? <laughs> so I'm like, what do you think you could do to make the like, what do you think you like, what would be the, like um, something that could happen that would make you guys blow up? Like, would it have to be like, there's a viral video or there's a person that you put on maybe that, Oh, that person, that was really fun. Let's see. Uh, well, we've had David Jaffe Sorry, on the show. Taking a shot. Had, no, that's cool. Uh, we've had David Jaffe on the, on the show, like for the, the star Wars show many uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that I necessarily marketed that in the best way ever because it had decent viewership, but like, I mean, he's the biggest celebrity I've ever had on, on the show. You know what I mean? And so I, I felt like I was really calling in a favor to have him on the show too. Because mm -hmm. he's quite, he's, I don't know if you know, but he's quite the personality on YouTube. He has his own street. His oh, own channel. I did not know he had his own channel. Oh, like, he's I know like, who David Jaffe is. It's like, yeah, he's I've never, got, I've met him a couple of times. I haven't 
actually. He's he's to the point where YouTube is paying him his like at least a, a decent amount of his bills. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, like he's he's on there a lot, or he was at least during the pandemic. But um, I didn't want to pull that string more than once because it felt like it felt like you know he's already this established person on YouTube, and and I felt like. I felt weird about asking him to come and do it when I know that he could be getting paid to go do it on his own channel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and so while I appreciated it and it was a fun show and everything and really, really fun to do. Um, I, I was like, okay, maybe we're not there yet. Maybe let's just do this for fun and then see if one people, people like what we're throwing out there or two, let's eventually get to the point where we're cranking out different types of, of content. So it's not just this. Mm -hmm. And then, then they happen to happen to upon it because of something else we do. You know what I mean? Um, because I think that's the better way to do it is have a variety of content. And it's just never worked out for me and Frank and Ricky that we, we have made the time to have a lot of variety of content, but I think, the reason we never stop doing this is because if we stop doing this, it's just going to be that much harder to convince ourselves to go make other stuff. You know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. at least if we're doing this every, every week, we're, we are saying we're not giving up on this. You know what I mean? So like, uh, but what would it take? I think it, I think it needs to be, uh, it just needs to get past that wall of like, you know, there's a, there's that fixed number where if we got, uh, if we just happen to get the right person on the Twitch, what, you know, cause like, that's the other thing. Most people don't even like watch us on Twitch. Um, oh. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to market the Twitch audience better, but we're there. We're all, we're all, we're always broadcasting on Twitch. Uh, for the main show every week as well. We're on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. It's so, just the majority of the time people just come to YouTube, probably because that's the easy. link I share. That's the link I share on, you know, when I promote it as well. Um, but yeah, it's the easiest one too. Um, but you know, it would just take it would take uh, it would take the right the right uh, combination of just you know people are interested in the thing we're talking about people want to see the people that we have on the show and it's, and we happen to be in, incredibly, you know, on point that day, I guess is the, is the thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that question really. Like, it's just, I know, I know that I accidentally found the secret sauce the first time I ever made a YouTube video and I have never been able to recreate that secret sauce again <laughs> And it's pretty funny because it's like, it's like if you won at a video game the first time you ever played it, and mm -hmm. you never, and you've never been able to win again. You know what I mean? Like, um, that's weird, right? Like, like, I, like for me, I never actually wanted to like start a YouTube channel or anything like that. But I always wanted to make. I, I've always wanted to make movies. Like movies is my, yeah. Like, that's my thing. I want to make movies. Now the thing is, is that the problem I have with making movies is that nowadays, doing anything the correct way or the legitimate way, we try to break into Hollywood and making things all big and bad and blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and you. You throw you throw it into that pot. You a I've come to realize when it comes to making movies, a you got to have a good story, at least a decent story. B it has to be executed fairly well. And now after it executes fairly well, it doesn't matter if it's a good story or it's executed fairly well. If a you don't have for it to be a thing in Hollywood, you need like unionized actors like you you can do things without unionized actors but it becomes harder yeah it becomes way harder to make things work then on top of that 
if everything falls in place and you get all your ducks in a row, you need a distributor. That is like one of the main things you need. You need somebody at, like it is extremely hard to get a distributor because so many people make movies. And so like I just saw this thing. I was what because I'm if, if you ever pay, if you ever have a conversation with Val, Val will tell you 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings is my moment of don't talk to me because I'm reading the box office reports. I'm just seeing how much movies make, like what movies came in the top 10, who did number one, who did number three, blah, 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 and all that other jazz. And But if you pay attention to the box office report, there's like 150 movies on that box office report, but mm -hmm. people only talk about the first, the top 10. Yeah. That's it. People only talk about the top 10. But if you look, there is a lot of movies. Like, for instance, this is actually really funny because I just watched this video of uh, um, from that Michelle Yao movie. I'm yeah. learning so much. Every, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, I'm learning so much that, first of all, that movie was made with seven people. It was not a huge cast. It, I mean, it wasn't like a huge group. They had have cast. You not, have you not seen it yet? I haven't seen it yet. I really uh, want to see it. It's one of the best movies I've seen in like 10 years. I I really want to see it. I just haven't. I haven't been to the last movie I saw was on. Last movie, no. Last movie I saw was Batman. That's the it's last the, movie I saw. It's, on it's the first non comic book movie I've seen in two years. I, in, I, in theaters. In theaters. Sorry. I miss going to going to the movies every week. You I used to go, you I used see go to movie. movies like two, three times a week. But then pandemic happens, and now I think I go to a movie like once every month or two months. I go to a movie. Go see it. I really do want to see that. That movie. That movie yeah. is it. That movie is one of those movies that is like a godsend because the stuff I'm reading about that movie, how much it cost them. It well, it costs thirty million to make the. Most of the budget was the visual effects, but mm -hmm. the but the thing is, is that the visual effects was very ragtag visual effects. Like they, the way they did a lot of the visual effects was like very guerrilla style. Like supposedly, like the time the when she goes when she goes through different dimensions and whatnot, it's actually them pushing her down a hallway in real life in a chair. They're mm -hmm. pushing her, and then they use different, or they they splice in different. They like put her in a chair and put a leaf blower behind her, let the so her hair fly all over the place, and they'll mm -hmm. put two giant TVs on each side of her, showing the video of the thing moving. So, mm -hmm. and they would splice the part of her being pushed down the chair, pushing pushed down the hallway in the chair with the video of them with two TVs on the side. Yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, they actually did it themselves. The director was was the visual concept. The person who did the directing, he was also the visual direct the visual concept director. Like yeah. he went through and he was like okaying all the visual aspects of like the CG aspects of the whole thing. And I yeah. was just like it literally the amount of people it took, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm just like, oh Wow, I need to really start this shit. But then I, then I have to. But then I start thinking about it. And I'm like, I was thinking of it, everything from I compartmentalize everything. And when it comes to me, I'm like, okay, right, get that good. You get that good. You can worry about everything else later. But now, yeah, I'm sitting there going like, okay. <laughs> Is writing the only thing I can do? I need to start like visualizing it. I need to start putting it in on screen, on camera, and whatnot. But then now, do I get to market it? How do I market it? And in my mind, I've always said, why don't I just cut out the middleman? Don't try to do a distributor and just try to figure out a way like YouTube or something like that to yeah. put out yeah, a movie. You, you should. You should just do YouTube for until. Until you know, until you can do more than YouTube, but it's just it's just really hard to conceptualize all this stuff without actually doing it. Yeah, 
Yeah. And I think that's the hard part. And, and I think, you know, I, I think that's the thing is here, here's, here's the beauty of it. Like however you decide to get there eventually use YouTube or whatever you sort platform you choose, use it as a place to document your process. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if five people watch it or if nobody watches it or if 500 people watch it. The reality is, is the one day that you make the thing that lots of people love a good percentage of them are going to go back and watch all the old stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's, that's why we never stop doing this is because look at what we've done at the end of, at the end of the day, Ricky and I and Frank have a year's worth over a year's worth. We have like 14 months of, of content that we've made. That's never going to go away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like, and Whenever, whenever that, if, if that ever happens the day, you know, when people really like the shit we make, it's just going to become an infinite loop of, 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 of feeding, of feeding itself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like, uh, all the things that, that once, once, once my account becomes monetized, the whole thing becomes monetized. And that means everything I've ever made becomes that way. And so that means if anybody goes back to watch one of my old videos, cause they want to see, what did this look like back when they first started? They're going to get an ad and then, and then revenue happens. So what I'm saying is if you don't know what you, what your end goal is, at least start documenting your process in, in a way that maybe you'll figure it out as you go. You know what I mean? Cause like what I've learned from the year, you know, the year of doing this plus, plus the year before that of doing the, the star Wars one and doing the toy videos and all that stuff. I, I have so many skills that I didn't have before that, but it's because I threw myself into the fire and forced myself to learn all these skills. And so, <laughs> I and, and, I, and, and I had to stop caring about what people think, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the reality of it. Like it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. not, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be your own worst enemy forever. Oh, I am definitely my own worst yeah. enemy. I know that for a fact. Yeah. But you know, like the other thing like it's that's also self-fulfilling is like what's really crazy is in the last year probably because of the pandemic but um hasbro has started leaning started acknowledging the the importance of these toy reviewers that are out there in the wild and so it went from you know like in 2020 hasbro was inviting them to come be like people in the background walk you know like waving their hands and saying, look, we know who you are, you know, like, look, they're in our videos. And then to from there to like 2021, those people are now being sent figures months, months in advance to be able to do a review uh, before anybody else. And then Hasbro mm -hmm. says, hey, here's our new figure. If you'd like to know more, so and so has it on their YouTube channel. And so now you've got Hasbro promoting people just like me who just are making videos with just their toys that they happen to have. And Hasbro, this giant company that's like a Fortune 500 company, is saying, go check out their YouTube and watch their stuff. And like, and in the process, it benefits them, right? Because now they don't even have to do anything to sell their own product because they have somebody else doing it for them. And mm -hmm. it's pretty nuts. And once we started seeing that, Ricky was like, when are you going to get that to that spot? And I'm like, man, I don't know. But that it does make me nervous because like that now, like I know that they are actually paying attention. You know what I mean? Like that. And that's weird because like that's they're the people that I I don't I don't say I wouldn't say like, oh, I admire or respect. Or, I mean, I it's not that I don't. It's just that they're a business that I really like their product. You know, what mm -hmm. I mean? like. And, and uh, it's, it, it's really cool to, to know that if I get good at celebrating their product, they will celebrate me. And, and again, once that happens, it's an endless cycle of, of it's, it's just perpetual. Like people will start watching those videos and they'll watch my other crap. Maybe they'll make fun of me for my other crap. 
I don't care because every time they review it, it's still going to end up being something cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm saying figure out like maybe do something weekly. That's uh... That was actually thinking. I'm like, because right now I'm on a, a short kick a kick on where basically I'm I'm writing the sh- shorts if mm-hmm. I did the full feature as basically a bunch of like five ten minute shorts and I was I was kind of thinking in that mindset but then it would literally have to be like a 24 where everything is intense or yeah. moving really fast Pay for a really fast pace because if it's going to be five ten minutes long, you can't necessarily give people a lot of time to breathe, or else they're going yeah. to breathe and then just be like, "Okay, I'm good. I don't even really need to deal with this anymore." Do you ever do you ever watch Red Letter Media? Mm, it sounds familiar. Why? I, I'm gonna it's say this, I, it's these two guys that start. They got famous by first starting out and doing these amazingly long teardowns of the star wars prequels like they did like i mean their videos were up about the same length as the movies themselves <laughs> and like they would just sh- scene for scene just tell you how fucking bad they were as movies like as far as like uh actually like movie construction goes you know what i mean because they these guys were both film film students they they did film uh they studied film and so they seem to know something but like they never they were never ever successful at breaking into film for whatever mm-hmm. reasons you know what i mean but they do know a lot about film and so and they're also nerdy and so when they made these videos which were very well produced very mm-hmm. well edited very well very very detailed breakdowns of and funny uh very well written of all of all the things wrong with those movies uh eventually after they did those they just started doing movie reviews like at some point they just started two of them hanging out in a room together recording themselves with two or three cameras and just talking like just shooting the shit and talking about what they liked and didn't like about a, a movie that they went and saw and they just did that. They just did that for, they've done that for years now. And it's really funny because like, you know, they don't really care about like whether or not people like their opinions. They're just, it's, their, it's just their opinions. And so they take a lot of shit sometimes and sometimes people really like them and, and stuff. But what's really funny is they just know, they just know what they like and what they don't like. And that's what they show up to do every day. And they're two friends that just like to talk shit about movies. Mm-hmm. And and they have blown up, man. They are so popular. And like it's really cool to see because it's literally just two people who would have done it anyways. And they just put a camera in front of them. You know what I mean? And it's, like it's kind of like the Cinema Sin guys. Kind of. The Cinema Sin guys spend way too much time editing, though. That's too much work. Like, well, it, but have you ever listened to their podcast? Their podcast uh, no, is actually I, pretty good. No, I've never done their podcast. I've never done. I, I used to watch the Cinema Sin movie. Uh, like I, I watched their, I watched their episode. I watched the Cinema Sin videos all the freaking time. But yeah, the podcast I listen to it. It's really hard because I don't. I because I don't drive a lot now. I pick mm-hmm. and choose what podcast I listen to, and Cinema Sins is literally one of the podcasts I listen to, and. I swear, you can just see that they love movies. Yeah, and it's actually funny because this this is also this an homage to the eighties because I feel like they love older movies. They love yeah. movies like because from- because they're because they're your age. That's probably mm-hmm. why you know what I mean. Like we understand it, and like I get it. Like it's like there's a space for everybody nowadays, but like a lot of people your age are going to find other people your age like Mm -hmm. that's just the algorithms like the algorithms are putting those things in front of your face because they want you to feel uh like seen and they want you to feel like uh heard you know like and so uh i think the algorithms are just really good at doing that nowadays so that 
you know, I know the stuff Ricky watches is completely not stuff that I watch, but he's got, he's got his own algorithms that are working for him too. You know what I mean? I'm so, sorry. I couldn't get over the fact that he said the first thing in the Jones he saw was a uh, crystal skull. Yeah. He always ruins everything like that. That's how <laughs> that, I just thought that was hilarious. I he's, was just like, he's, just, he's really? like, he's in his twenties, man. He doesn't. He's in his 20s and he didn't have parents that cared about movies the way that he does or the way that I did and you did and stuff. And so well, like he, well, he, he grew okay. up going, he saw the things as they came out in theaters, you know, like. Well, that's the thing, though. It's like for me, I I remember the day I fell in love with movies. I remember the day to the T. It was yeah, but I, for him, for him, it's video games, and and because because we didn't. You got to remember though, like when we fell in love with movies, what else did we have besides movies? Like that's true. Yeah, I mean? that's very true. Because nowadays there's so much stuff, and it's there's like, so I, much, so much stuff. I I will and always will. I will be a strong component of saying this. I don't care what anybody says. Social media has ruined every damn thing. But I don't think I don't think it's ruined it. It's just it's 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 made it different from what what we what we yes. experience. Well, and, and, that, again, and that and that's that's a that's a byproduct of just getting old. Is yeah. is is fighting change, right? Like, and so I try not to say things are ruined. You know, anything because like. I'm sure there's an entire generation of people that really do like the things that social media has to offer. Mm -hmm. Like, but, um, but I get it. Like, you know, like uh, I was chatting uh, today or yesterday with, with Travis because he's hating on the new halo show mm -hmm. and he, he thinks it's terrible. Um, and I just gave him my two cents and I said, you know, I just started watching it last week and I hated the first 20 minutes of it. But I knew enough people that were watching it that I, I stayed with it. And I actually started liking it after a while. I don't know when, but I started liking it. And I was like, and, and in total fairness, I have never played a Halo game in my life. Mm -hmm. I've never played one. Uh, and, and it's just my, you know, I have my own reasons I never played one. But I have nothing to compare it to. Because I have, I have no knowledge of Halo other than I know what a Halo game looks like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i know what master chief looks like and stuff so but i was you know he got he started flipping out on me because like you know he's travis and and mm -hmm. and uh i was i don't know man i kind of feel like this show has made me understand ricky a lot more for why he likes the star wars prequels so much because those that's what he started with and if, yeah, if, I could if understand that's, if, like that's that. his, if that's his point of reference, like it's not like he had the luxury of of being twenty years older and having grown up, you know, seeing the ones we did. Mm -hmm. uh, it it does it does it does it mean that he has bad taste? Yeah, maybe a little bit, <laughs> whatever. But like, uh, <laughs> but like, but like, it also means that like, like how would he have better taste if if he didn't have if he didn't have the opportunity to see those or to experience those things so like like i understand that i never played halo and i know that halo is a is a, a cornerstone in 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 thir uh, first person shooter gaming i know that it means a lot to a lot of people but it means jack shit to me so mm -hmm. I can watch a TV show with Halo and see the guy look just like Master Chief and be like, okay, it's Halo, you know, and not know and it, not care. I'm I'm only on my second, I'm only on the second episode of Halo. Like I just started watching it. And yeah. like the first episode, everything I've like all the reviews I've read about uh Halo, I've everybody said the same thing. It is it Halo. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It, well, here's the thing. I haven't played Halo since the second one, mm -hmm. and it's for me. I'm not really big on shooters unless it's Call of Duty. Like Call of Duty, I've 
I played a lot of Call of Duty. Yeah. And in my mind, playing a lot of Call of Duty don't mean it doesn't mean much because I don't play online Call of Duty. I play can't. I hate shooters where you go online because I suck at playing online games. I really suck. Like the only online game I've ever played that I was good at is WoW, and I was decent at WoW. Uh, but shooters, like I suck at that shit. So campaign, I I love playing the campaign just to listen to the story, just to see where the story goes up. Play it through, and I'm good. Halo was the only game I played for online. It's the only game I've ever played for online. Halo 1 and Halo 2. And I never actually played anything else about Halo other than 1 and 2 online mode. Never even paid attention to the story. So I know what I know about Master Chief. I know what Master, what the essence of Master Chief is. But the thing is, is that I can't say that I am the biggest Master Chief like fan out there. So watching the first episode of the TV show, I was like, it's not as bad as everybody makes it out to be. But yeah. the little bit I know of Halo, I know that the Master Chief that they're portraying isn't the Master Chief in the game. But they have to, if he's going to be the main character, they got to give him a little bit more than the Master yeah. Chief in the game. Because the yeah. Master Chief in the game was a lot, their big thing with the Master Chief was not knowing a lot of things about Master Chief. And that doesn't work as a story. I mean, unless, does not unless, work. Yeah. Unless, you're, unless you're the Mandalorian. And even it, then, and even I, then, we know a lot about Din Djarin. We know a yes. lot about him. You know, so. Yeah, it's, it's like Master Chief didn't talk much for the first Of two course not, because it's a shooter video game. So, yeah. like, you know, yeah, that's why I just feel weird about, like, I, I understand more about how stupid we sound as nerds when we get really precious about something. Because well, it's like, because you got to remember that, like, whenever a new version of your content is made, the reason it's made new is to attract new audiences. Mm -hmm. They don't make, they're not making a new Superman for you mm -hmm. to see that. We've had this conversation before. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to be okay with concessions being made. But and so, yeah. So like, that's the thing though. It's like, for me, I, I, I've, I've come to learn. I believe it or not that conversation me and you had helped me understand a situation more than anything, because I always used to look at like situations like this, like going into the new Star Wars as like they're continuing my story, but they aren't. They ain't continuing my story. They don't care about my story. They my would like story, your, they would like your money, but they yeah. want a lot of other people's money too. Yes, they they want money yeah. of new people. They want money for the people who aren't born yet. They, so they want to bring in the new people yeah. that yes. will make them go, like, I need to bring my kids. Like exactly. how I was when I first saw it and knowing that I, when I have a child, I'm going to introduce them to Star Wars and they're going to just yeah. fall in love with Star Wars the way I fall in love with Star Wars. Yeah. But they're also going to walk into whatever new Star Wars is coming out and say that's their Star Wars, not mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker. And I get it. I understand. I, I'm okay with that. I'm learning a lot more in 2022 because 2020 and 2021 taught me I don't mean shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it taught me. Literally. It really taught me I don't mean shit. You don't, uh, you you mean shit to certain people, but you don't yeah. mean shit. You don't mean shit to like the world, uh, as far as like onboarding you as something that you don't well, want to be. You know, if you're well, if you're not essence, the, if you're not the target demographic, you're not the target demographic, and then you don't the, mean shit. With the essence of what I know, I meant shit. I don't mean shit. There's a difference. I meant shit when they were talking to me, 
Now they're not talking to me. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. they don't, I don't mean shit. <laughs> so yeah. I get, and I, I understand it now. I just need to understand it also from sample. Like, for instance, when I'm writing, I'm not writing as much as I want to write for me. I'm not writing for me. I'm writing because I have a passion and that's for me. Mm-hmm. But I'm not writing because I'm not writing for me. I'm writing for the dipshits out there that is basically the new... I'm writing for Ricky. That's what I'm writing for. I'm writing for people like Ricky, who are the young kids, who are literally going to look at me like, that's cool. The shit that you saw in the 1980s, that's not cool. The shit that you saw in the 1990s, that's not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. And so, and so that that's why it's funny. Like, it's funny for me because, like, when I, you know... I was making those videos and I was showing them for my, my friends and my friends didn't get them. And it's fine. Like I, I'm, I'm funny. Cause like I somehow I ended up with interests that are not shared by a lot of the, my friends. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I know that makes it weird. Cause I guess you're supposed to like find people that share your interests. But uh, <laughs> when, when I, when I find people that share my interests, like, I'm weirded out by them sometimes. Like I'm like mm-hmm. I'm like I like Nas though. Nas and I Nas geek and I can geek out on toys all day. Like for hmm. ever. Like that's that's our thing that we do. Like um yeah, Nas has been in this room and he won't leave this room if you if you like if you don't push him because <laughs> Uh, Cause there's all these toys for him to play with in here mm. and stuff. And it's, it's pretty funny, uh, but it's pretty hard for me to find a grown man, my age that has the same appreciation for the things that I like, you know, that, and taking the photos with them and doing all these things with them and stuff. And so, uh, you know, I'm fine with that. I don't need, I don't need to have a lot of people that are into that. But what it's funny is when I show the videos to my friends, cause I like my people, you know, people to see what I'm doing mm-hmm. I show it to them and they don't quite get it and it's fine, you know, and, but then I go and put them out there and it's, it's people of a totally different generation that love the thing I'm doing. And I'm like, that is so cool. That is so cool that I can make something that like younger people just love. And I don't understand why. And I'm cool with it. I just want to support any and everything that my friends are doing that are not, that is not, like stupid, and when yeah, I say stupid, yeah, see when that. I say stupid, I don't mean like playing with toys, stupid, I mean like going out selling drugs, stupid, like it's like going out robbing people, <laughs> stupid. That's yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like, if they ain't doing anything that's harming other people, I support any and everything, and I will do whatever yeah, I can. To but help you, can support that. you can support it without liking it, though, is what I'm saying, like you know, but, or, or getting I, it, or getting it, you know what I mean, like, or, or f- being like. Yeah, that's not necessarily for me, but I'll watch it and I'll share it or whatever, you know, like I got two two hours ago I geeked out over Galaxy Rangers. You guys didn't quite see it the same way I did, but the fact of the matter is is that I geeked out over because I because I remembered it and I'm like, oh yeah, I know Galaxy Rangers. And I'm like, mm. yeah, I just think I just think you don't watch Galaxy Rangers a a lot lately. Oh, oh hold on. Wait one second. Yeah, that sounds like you don't watch it lately. Shut up. I have it. <laughs> Shut up. Just because you have it doesn't mean you watch it lately. Yes, I actually was just watching it. This is why I'm like, why can't I find it? Because I know I just... It's because I just moved everything. Sorry. Uh, Shut uh, up. Yeah, I have I have all of the Transformers uh, DVDs over here in a glass case below me. I haven't watched them in like 10 years. <laughs> I'm just saying. As soon as I walk, as soon as I walk away, I'm going to, as soon as I get off log off, I'm going to find it. 
But I look at it from the standpoint, like, okay, I couldn't find it because I literally, right before I did all this stuff, and I was just looking at it. I literally, I was just looking. I have the box set of Galaxy Rangers. I got the but, box set of Transformers right here. Like, stuff like this. The box set of Bionic 6. This is, like, stuff like this freaking turns me on. I love and that's cool. This but I don't have to like like your shit. But oh, I no, no, I'm not saying you don't. Yeah, I'm not saying you have to like it. But I'm saying for me, this is like when you want to hear me geek out. I've always said if I like if I have people around me that can talk about shit like this, I probably talk for hours. And you know how much I like to talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely remember Galaxy Rangers, and I'm like. No thanks. You know, I think my biggest problem with Galaxy Rangers is I don't, I didn't love cowboys growing up, well, and, I was, and so I didn't, so I didn't care that they were sci-fi cowboys. I never actually, I never actually knew what the hell I liked, as in cowboys or anything like that. I was, I just, to me, I just knew what was cool, and to me, that was cool. Like again, Bionic Six, Bionic Six was cool to me. There were some corny ass things. Watching it now, when you guys are saying, does it live up to now? Galaxy Rangers lives up to now more than Bionic 6. And I still think Bionic 6 is Okay, awesome. I mean, that's a weird bar. Like, you're comparing it to Bionic 6. <laughs> it, it doesn't live up to the today, but literally, I have watched this box set of this version, this volume 1, volume 2 box set of Bionic 6, and I've watched both of these multiple times i'm watching the intro to galaxy rangers and i will concede that the intro for most 80s cartoons holds up to today but yeah. only because the intros were outsourced to other like japanese companies it was the same, it was the same company that did uh thundercats um, thundercats and and yeah. Super i know yeah. and let's not lie the intro to Thundercats is the best part of Thundercats every week. <laughs> they did they had some liberties. <laughs> they, they, it's the best part of Thundercats they, every week. Every week. They look, I have a different nostalgia with Thundercats than most people because Thundercats the in, was the intro to Silverhawks is the best part of Silverhawks every week. See, and I like that. That's the thing for me. All right, look, I love Thundercats. I love Thundercats, but I actually love Silverhawks way more than I love Thundercats. Wings of silver, nerves yeah. of steel. Yeah. Oh, Silverhawks. Silver no. Silverhawks yes. are stupid. They're I just, loved it. I loved just, like, it. Like, you don't understand. You can love it and still acknowledge they're stupid. <laughs> like, that's, that's okay. Well, again, I was a kid. You, the premise... There's so a, was I. There was a, there's a premise of... There's a premise of a lot... There's a lot of premises out there that I think I find to be the dumbest thing ever. For instance, SpongeBob SquarePants. I think it's the stupidest thing out there. But it makes sense to people. I, I cannot stand SpongeBob because it's it makes okay. no sense I, to me. Do I, do I think... Like I, I think you need to be uh, some clarification here. Uh, I just understand that like the shows that I thought were really good when I was a kid, when I go back and watch them, I realize they're not good. <laughs> but but the IP is still really special to me. Mm -hmm. And so when I see companies try to remake or, or, or cash in on that nostalgia, I'm down for it. Have you seen Super 7's Silverhawks toys? No. Dude, look Post those it. up. What's it called? Super 7? Super 7 is the company, yeah. Um, like, does it in any way make the show better? No. <laughs> but oh, wow. are the toys super cool looking? Hell yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like oh, I can wow. call I can call your shit stupid, but still love love these freaking toys. You know, yeah, what I mean? that, that's kind of cool. 
You know, all right, so <laughs> you want to hear something funny? All right, this is actually a very funny about my childhood, funny story about my childhood. So Ryan, this is to show how dope Ryan is as an artist. Ryan used to make all the Transformers, Silverhawks, Thundercats, and I mean every single Thundercat, Silverhawk, Monstar, like the Battle Tank, uh, the ba the Battle Cat, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, the Thunder Tank, that's what I meant. Thunder Tank, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Cat Slayer, the Cat Slayer. The, he made everything out of cardboard. Yeah. When he used to go, he used to go home, my mother used to come home with boxes of like cornflakes and whatnot. He would take the bag of cornflakes out, put it on top of the refrigerator, and take the box, go into the bedroom, draw out a three dimensional like thing. Like how you see how these toys are right there. That is dope. That is dope as shit. <laughs> it's cool, right? Do they sell like, these anymore? What, what are they out yet? Or these are what... these are new. They they took pre-orders for these. Uh this wave three, the pre-orders I think started a few weeks ago. So these were October and this was June of last year. These are all new. They're not cheap, but yeah, these are these are a currently new uh set of figures that they're making right now. They also make um they also make uh, Thundercats, too. You should see their Thundercats. They're pretty cool. Uh, let me find their Thundercats. Um, Ultimates. Yeah, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can appreciate my nostalgia of things without having to, like, be delusional about how good things were. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Delusional is a delusional in this aspect is different because the thing is, is that what made them awesome was your delusion when you saw them. No, 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 no. Because like it wasn't a delusion back then. Because back then, that it was the best thing you could watch at the time. But I kind of feel like you're doing the exact same thing that I'm that I was doing, where I'm comp where I was comparing the new Marvel stuff with the old Marvel stuff. It's like you're looking at it compared to stuff that you see now. You're sitting there saying, "Well, it's not that good." No, 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 no. It still meant something back then. It should still be that good to you. Like again, in my mind, like do do I think the Star Wars toys? is cool from 1970 as they are now. No, but I didn't collect the Star Wars toys back then. Do I think the G.I. Joe toys are cool back then as they are now? Yes. I think, actually, I still think that they're better, the ones from back then. Those were really cool compared to now. Because... No, they're, the, they're not better than the ones from now. <laughs> like, you see, you see how he... You, okay, you see that battle tank that you just that you scroll by at the bottom. Ryan built this whole thing in 3D out of cardboard and it looked like this. I believe you. Not only here's a cool thing about Ryan. Ryan built all the transformers and not only did he build all the transformers, they look like the cartoon and they transformed I used into to build, cars. I used to build transformers out of paper and they would transform. Ryan yeah. Ryan did it out of cardboard. Ryan did the whole Transformers universe. He did all of the Silverhawks. And not only the Silverhawks, he built them where I, if they touched their hips, the wings would come out. Like Ryan did some phenomenal shit. That made no sense to me how he did it, but he did it and it was gorgeous like literally i'm looking at all this stuff and i'm like ryan did a better job than this shit. well see that's your memory of it i believe ryan did a cool job but brian ryan didn't do a better job of making the thunder tank than this actual thunder tank right here 
Oh, okay. you, well, it, it did exactly the exact same thing as doing right now. <laughs> like it literally, but it was just made out of cardboard. But literally, it did the exact same thing. The mouth opened just like that. The arms lifted up, and then the guns were underneath there, exactly like that. Not only that, the freaking wheels moved. And it was cardboard. Ryan did, and like, seriously, I'm looking at all of this. I'm just like, yep, that's literally what Ryan did. <laughs> well, in any case, super your childhood all over again. So if you're curious about uh, getting stuff that, that makes you feel nostalgic, they're definitely doing a lot of it. So uh, these are not cheap, by the way. Like, uh, I don't know what that tank costs, but it's not cheap. I it, I think it's like in well, the four five four or five hundred dollars. I'm guessing. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's like the Millennium Falcon. And honestly, God, that Millennium Falcon, the Lego Millennium Falcon. As much as I want that Millennium Falcon, I will never buy it because it's a Lego. Because I don't feel I I I take pride in saying I cannot spend that much money on something and then have to put it together. <laughs> Uh, so it's like to me that's what this is it's the same thing like this set of four two hundred and twenty dollars that's what they are these these guys uh, the set of four for the silver oh, hawks oh are they yeah yeah it's two hundred and twenty dollars for the silver hawks wow. i haven't even looked at the thundercats yeah the thundercats are pretty hard to find because like They've been making them like, for a couple of years. But like I'm looking at these G.I. Joe here on this website, on the same website. No. But those aren't wild. those aren't those aren't G.I. Joe's actual G.I. Joe toys. Those are those are not G.I. Joe's. Uh, if you want to see what real real G.I. Joe's look like now, let me show you what real G.I. Joe's look like now. Please show me what real G.I. Joe's look like. Because I'm also looking at those transformers and those transformers look whack. The the Let's go to, let's get a good one. Um, that's pretty cool, but look at this guy, man. Jesus uh, Christ, that, that's a lot more detail in the face than they than they used to do. I know. That's, that's what I'm a, saying. A lot more you, detail. You can't tell me that the old ones are better when look at these guys i'm curious how big they are how big these they're are. six Just, inch they're six inches the same size as my see, marvel legends okay now don't get me wrong six inches it's not bad i'm trying to think hold on okay so it's about that's oh, oh okay it's they're a little bigger than than the they're a little bigger than the actual like the old time GI Joes, yes. the old, old time GI Joes are more like four. They are three and three quarter. The old okay. GI Joes. Okay, yeah, that's believable. Yeah, so it's like, so look at this guy. Is, look at okay, this guy. But they have more room to do more detail, which makes more sense. But right, just like those thunder so, cats are bigger than the older ones. Oh, they are. Oh, now are the silver hawks bigger than the other ones? Uh, well, actually, I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. I think the Silver Ox and, and Thundercats were five inch toys back in the day. Yeah, they were. But they uh, were, these are those are the new ones are six inch for sure. They were the, at, le the at least at least at least least six inch at least six inch. Those new figures are. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying like like technology has just made it so that everything that, that is made now is just way cooler. Look at this guy. Look at this, man. Look at this. They finally okay. made it. They finally made it so his sheath and his bow and all that are actually all one piece here. Not the the bow is detachable from that. But like his sheath and his and his quiver are one piece. That's what it was like in the cartoon. Uh -huh. But they never but they never made it look cool in the toy because it was all big and bulky. But because of scaling, everything looks proper or a lot more proper in in six inch form. I'm just saying. And look, he's got swappable heads 
and all this wait, cool stuff. Wait, swap your head to what? Or, sorry, the hood. You can, you, you oh, can oh, the, he the, put the hood on and do the, it hood, yeah, yeah, you can okay. put the hood off and you can take off the see, he's got the pulled down hood there. So, okay. yeah, I'm just saying it's it's hard to it's hard to argue with the old and like what's really funny is they all they also sell they do sell new versions of of the old stuff mm -hmm. but but it's but they're better too usually like i mean see look at this this guy's this guy's just a straight up retro that's a retro cobra dude and you can buy this if you want but it's like I don't want that. Like that looks not for forty one dollars. Yeah, it comes with two of them. Yeah, but for forty one bucks, two of those. Come on, man. Nah, not for yeah. forty one dollars. Meanwhile, you never got one of these when you were a kid. Do you know what well, this is? Yes, I know. It's Megatron. Wait, no, no it's, it's both. Oh, it's Jesus both. Christ. See, <laughs> now here's the thing, though. Here's a here's a true calling for the 80s toys is that all plastic or is that die cast because the yeah, 80s it, toys were die cast don't, they don't make they don't make most gi joe toys were not die cast no 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 i'm talking about transformers I'm talking about transformers now nah, uh you could like i have a bunch of die cast ones but they're masterpiece like they're masterpiece but figures i actually so, the only transformers i have here is i have hot rod and i have jazz it's the only ones i have here i i I bought I bought Optimus Prime, but then I gave it to Ryan for his birthday once because it because he really likes Optimus Prime. So, but I bought the original Generation One Optimus Prime, and it was dope. I loved it. But Ryan loves Optimus Prime, so I gave it to him for his birthday. Yeah, um... like I'm looking at this like Shockwave. I remember. The Shockwave, because I had Shockwave when I was a kid. Shockwave was diecast metal. Yeah, but he also couldn't pose. He also couldn't pose to save his life. Not fully. I had Soundwave. Not not fully. <laughs> I had Cup, Soundwave. Cup couldn't move his legs at all. Yes. At all. That I remember. Grimlock was probably the best damn articulated toy out there, in my opinion. Because Grimlock, everything that needed to move was part of his transformation. Like his wrist moved, his head moved, his knees moved, his uh, his thighs moved, his feet moved, his hands moved. Because everything he had to do literally had something to do with him being transformed. Grimlock yeah. was dope as shit. But Masterpiece Grimlock is way more dope. Because look it at looks him. the same. No, he does not. I'm trying to find a better one here. Is there one that compares the old one to the new one? Uh, I don't know. What's that one in the middle? The what with the two? What this? What's that one? Yeah, that one. That's some. Ghetto plastic one. Ghetto uh, plastic one. That's like a kid's Grimlock. I'm showing you a new one that's actually made of die cast. Well, I, I, yeah, um, the one, the own, there were certain parts on him in the old version that was plastic. That the head was plastic. Yeah, but look at this thing. The old one couldn't do that. Couldn't do what? Wait, wait, what are you talking about? The old one could not ever stand like that. Like the one that's in the big picture. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, this is weird. Your the screen is not showing what I'm seeing. Oh, that's strange. How the hell? Oh, I see. I see what happened here. Uh, it's not. Sorry, I'm sharing the wrong. I didn't realize that it actually uh, switched to a different screen. So, one second. Let me do this. What if I do this? I was confused here. I was like, "What? Are, what are you talking about, Joe?" Um, go there. Um, 
Uh, did you hit enter or? Oh, I was going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't actually. I'm trying to think. Did his legs spread because there was an essence? Because I remember how to transform because his head turned, his legs turned to his hand. Okay. Uh, what the fuck is that? Did did that robot have a mohawk? No, he has a crown from, from when he was King Grimlock. He's King Grimlock, dude. That's not how it was in the cartoon. It was. There's an episode where he has a crown. Wait, you talking about the new ones or the No, the old ones. There's an episode where he becomes King Grimlock. And so this toy actually comes with a removable crown so you can recreate King Grimlock. Why don't I remember this? Yeah, I don't know. I remember this? Maybe because you don't remember the things that you think you remember. <laughs> <laughs> this is Generation 1 uh, Transformers. Yes! Do not remember that, please. Okay. I will take your word for it because if it, it like with me and TV shows, I can honestly say you and toys, I will say are relative rivals. I'm just saying that it's uh it's like the de the level of detail that they're putting into the figures nowadays cannot can does not it's not even worth comparing to the old to the old stuff. Like the old stuff is just so old. It's just that's what it is, and it, and it's fine. It's okay that it doesn't. It's not the same like quality anymore. But I will. Uh, I I have to. I uh, I don't know. It's like maybe if I collected more toys right now, I can say maybe you're right, but. <laughs> Uh, not off of memory. I don't hold on. That. Hold on a second. I got stuff here for you, um, so you can see things. So you can see things better. I'm going to share a different thing with you. I'm going to share some photos that I did because I own this Grimlock. Uh, do I do it like this? There we go. I call this picture hangry. Huh. Wait, no, you because uh the head the head used to be able to move like that because his uh when it flipped backwards, it used to go straight down. It used to go straight up and down. The head used to flip backwards. He, his head turns sideways too. It, it can turn in a lot of different. That ways. is that definitely is something it didn't do. It didn't. I don't remember it turning side to side. I know it flipped up and down, but not sideways. That's pretty cool. I like that. Now, how do you do your lighting? And when you do stuff like that, do you do your lighting as in like you you set up like one or two lights or? How many lights do you normally set up? Let me go to the light picture. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Lots of lights. Mm -hmm. There's my lights. I got, so in this case, I have uh, one red one red light in the back on the right i have one blue on the left i have a ring light in the front and are, i might have a smaller little light in the in the foreground are you using a dslr uh-huh nice that's high quality shit yeah that's why i make that's why i make cool stuff mm -hmm. but it just gets like setting up a scene like this is not is not easy you know like it's it take it takes time to do all that i guess i gotta pose everything uh and then for fun this is something i offer on 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 the patreons i do white pictures to just show you the, the things i used in the photo so that you can see them more clear without, check. without any weird lighting and stuff like that you know yeah but yeah this is what this is the kind of thing that i do or I was doing for a long time uh, with this. With, this is with Nas. This is the thing I was doing with Nas. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of like you know put these together so that 
patrons can have a chance to see all the all the ingredients that I use to make these things. But yeah, that's that was what, pretty cool. I actually like that. that was yeah, cool. I have another one. Hold on a second that you will like, and I just got to remember which one it is. And I'm looking. I'm looking. Where are you? Which one is it? There it is. You'll like this one too. As soon as I find the correct. There it is. Got it. Okay. If you got to go soon. But it's kind of cool because you don't have a. You don't have Val trying to get your attention today. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm I am getting tired. So that's actually pretty cool. How do I need like, to it like this? Yeah. Like and it's the same three light rig. Uh it might be. Um it might be the same three. It might be slightly different, but I'll I'll get to it. I'm trying to find it. Where's my where's my background photo? It, that can't be it, can it? Hmm, this one might be more than actually this is a pretty deep shot, so I had more lights going on here. Um, because I it's a really long one and I'm trying to find where's the behind the scenes picture on this? Hmm. I'm not seeing the behind the scene photo on this. I might have it on Google somewhere, but it's actually a really deep shot. So like these panels that he's standing on, like it's mm -hmm. two of them combined. So I had to bring out a table. Uh, there's a table underneath this that extends past my, my photo area. So I, I, it's, it's a really deep shot, but I did that to get the depth the depth of field so that it can make Megatron kind of look blurry in the see how he kind of he kind of gets a little a little a little out of focus mm -hmm. so the focus is on Optimus it's a it's an actual deep shot um but yeah now do you do any photoshop to this afterwards uh the go now part is photoshopped but other than that everything else is just is just nope. film or your camera i should say yeah it's my camera um i try i it's my camera and my lights i try so i'm i'm a member of a group called acba and it's what it stands for is articulated comic book art mm -hmm. and they they're a, a group of toy photographers that uh like that's what they do they try to recreate like kind of like or recapture the magic of the stuff that you know like mm -hmm. they they saw their toys doing in comics or in cartoons and stuff like that. And so they have some very specific rules. And so it, it it's kind of constricting sometimes because their rule they're very arbitrary. Like there's nothing that says that there's no rule that says I can't make this picture if I want to, right? Like I, mm -hmm. if I want to make if I want to make a picture where Optimus is telling Chip go now because he he can't protect him much longer. I'm going to do it. Right. But like ACBA doesn't like, wouldn't like this picture because the thing that they like to do is make everything tangible, which means like, if I want to have that pic, that, that word bubble that says go now, mm -hmm. that needs to actually be a real word bubble that's printed and, and, fl and somehow <laughs> made to look floating in that spot. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that rule. And so sometimes I make stuff that's not, that doesn't work for their rules. You know what I mean? I get it. Uh, it's cause it's a little, it's a little too much extra work for me sometimes. And like, uh, but I like to still, uh, I appreciate that they like, I appreciate that they prefer things not, or to be authentic, you know, to, to be like this, I didn't have to do this by manipulating things, but like, you know, Nas and I don't necessarily agree on that all the time. And so this is Nas's and he, he clearly, he clearly Photoshopped that, you know, like, yeah, there's uh, extra glow on there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's a lot of extra glows on there. Yeah. There's... But it's, but it's cool. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's, that was us. So like 
this is what Nas and I were doing is every week we would come up with a, a theme and then we take that theme and we go and just make whatever toy photos we could. And, and then we'd let people vote on which one was the better one that week. So the theme for that I week was I, Guardi Guardian. I think I actually voted on some of those. Yeah, you voted on a lot of them. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's... But sometimes, you know, Nas and I are both members of that group, but sometimes we just like to do stuff that's just cool that doesn't give a shit about the rule of it has to it has to be no Photoshop and all this stuff, you know, but um, sometimes... Sometimes I really try to do the photo, the no Photoshop. I have one. I I have another one that I think you'll like. Uh, hold on a second. It's uh, uh, it. The problem is like I have there a lot of funny names for them, and so I can't, I sometimes I can't remember the funny names, uh, and so I have to like I I have them all here in front of me. I'm just looking for the funny name that makes the most sense <laughs> uh there it is i found it funny names weird one second let me get this funny one up where is it i think it's this guy yeah all right here it goes I appreciate that you're just hanging out watching me show you pictures. Oh, no, it's fine. There you go. Right there. <laughs> How'd that, you get him suspended? Is he is it wires or is there something holding him up from the bottom? Uh, there's actually a metal uh, there's a metal pole that's going right up his butt, but it, it just I made it I made it, it overlap. Like a window. I made it I made it la uh, uh, overlap right here with the the corner where the two walls meet. So uh, you it looks, so you, yeah, it looks. So good. you actually, so you actually don't see it, but it's there. It's going right up his butt. No, I actually really like that. And then, that and then, good. and then the base, the base of it is a big circle, but it's actually hidden underneath this uh, this uh, tatami rug. So. Yeah, that's why the rug kind of curves up here. You notice it gets a little higher. Yeah. It's because there's something underneath that's that's holding him up. Yeah. That looks dope. I actually really like it. Yeah, but that's no Photoshop at all. It's just all it's all just tricks with the tricks with the, the camera and, and um wait, there's no Photoshop at all? No Photoshop at all. That's pretty good with the purple light. The purple light that's going over certain things that makes it's, you go like, oh. Yeah, it's actually not a purple light. It's one blue and one red. Ah, makes sense. It's, it's yeah. see if you look at Storm Shadow, or actually look at Snake Eyes. Look at you can see the blue, yeah, blue on yeah. one on one side and red on the other. Yeah, and so it's it. it's a blue and a red, and they just kind of happen to meet. They kind of meet on this background right here. So there's kind of they're kind of turning a lot of stuff purple in the back, but yeah, but that's that's uh that's the kind of shit that I I was having fun doing for a while. And see, here's some alternate ones. Um, and then there's the figure. Wait, did, did you map any of this out before you started doing this shit, or like do a quick sketch or something? No, I just kind of knew. I knew I knew the space that I had. Uh, to work with and I just kind of like I knew where I wanted the camera to be yeah see that you still can't see the pole up his butt it's pretty nope. it's pretty crazy I'm actually really impressed with myself right now I'm looking at this and I'm like how the hell did I do that that's cool uh, but yeah this is what it looks like without the lights and then um, that's what it looks like with the lights yeah yeah, you did a good job. I actually really like this. Yeah, thanks. But yeah, that's so that's the kind of st fun stuff that I like doing with my my toys, and hopefully I can get back to doing more of that stuff because oh that one's cool because see I blurred him, I blurred him. Um, but yeah. Anyways, thanks for right. watching that. That's pretty fun. It was fun for me to show you that, and I definitely encourage you to figure out. The thing that you want to do, 
Yeah. And start and start recording yourself doing that all the time. Yep. I am. I, 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 I yeah. I actually, I, I think I have a competition. Ah, ah, yeah. In two weeks, I have a competition. I have another short composition, uh, screenwriting short competition that in two weeks. So I will be sending you stuff so you can. Are you going to send it to me before you submit it, or are you going to send it to me after you submit well, it? Well, only if you're willing to read it quickly, because I I only get four days to read, to come up with a concept, write it, edit it, and then submit it. Eh, it gets, it gets uh, honestly, it gets easier the, the more I know uh, how you write, like because uh, when you first when you first asked me to do it, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was getting into. And I was mm -hmm. like, man, this guy's asking me to read a screenplay. I don't know what that's going to look like. You know, I, I thought you were going to send me like a book. And then when it's like, oh, it's like eight pages. I'm like, okay. But now, but now that I've seen two of yours, I'm like, yeah, I could probably read in 10 minutes. And I, 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 put, I put it like this. I, I go to a school of, get to the point as quickly as possible i try to get to well, the point as quickly as possible. but what I, but i'm saying is like you know if you don't have context like mm -hmm. asking a person no, hey do you, do you want to read my screenplay you most people who don't read screenplays wouldn't know what that entails like myself so it's the same kind of thing as like when people are like hey dennis what are you what have you been up to i make a podcast most people just laugh and they're like mm -hmm. oh, okay because all they know is that's what that's what everybody does. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care what other people do. This is what my podcast is. It, so It's actually funny because I was watching this thing today. It was like, the, the, have you ever heard of this guy called S Sneak something? Sneak? He's on uh, YouTube. His name is, hold on. I actually was just watching it. It's uh, Sneeko. He, he's a very good interviewer. He just interviews random people on the street. And just ask them random questions, but mm -hmm. he does it very well. And there was this one thing I was just watching, uh, just a minute ago, where he was asking them about the R. Kelly trial, and P these these group this group of people started talking to him, and they, and he was like, they asked, "What are you doing this interview for?" And he said, "Oh, it's for my YouTube channel." And he was just, they were like, ah, it's your YouTube channel. They get ready to walk away. And then one of the girls was just like, wait a minute. How many people follow you? He was like, I don't know. And then he showed them her chat, his channel. And he had 900,000 subscribers. So literally, they went from going like, ah, I don't want to do this bullshit. To like, holy shit, you had 900,000 subscribers? Oh, I will totally do this interview. And it was, yeah. it was hilarious. Because I was just like, oh, fucking assholes. <laughs> who only doing it because he has nine hundred thousand subscribers? That's pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's, up. yeah, yeah. I know it is, but you know that's the world. And yep. then, by, by right. the way, I'm going to show you one last one because I just remembered. This is the one I'm. I think I'm most proud of because this one actually got featured on on websites or a website. Was that Cyclops? Uh, uh, no, that's a Hydra henchman. Oh, okay. All right. It's Hydra Bob. <laughs> we'll hench for food. <laughs> Have a nice day. Well, yeah. hench for food. That's nice because I actually wait. Did you make that banner or did he come? The sign. With... I made the sign. Yeah. I made oh. the sign with some cardboard, just like your your brother used to make toys okay. for you. <laughs> yeah, I just cut up a piece hey, of cardboard. And... <laughs> <laughs> I cut up a piece of cardboard and and just had fun drawing on it and so and did you who made the guitar uh that's the hasbro accessory that comes with a different character that's um that's actually spider punk's guitar where do you get all these random characters for the background one uh they're not random that's the thing like they're they they actually are characters that you know and love you is that wolverine like, yep I'm trying to see, like, you have a small picture, and I'm trying to look at it, look at the small screen. Hold on, let me see if I can blow this up. Okay, I can blow this up. 
Okay, so that's Wolverine. Sorry, I'm trying to find uh I was trying to find you a good picture, but I think you got what you got. I'm trying to find the best thing here. Where is it? I go too fast. <laughs> Has been. That's funny. Yeah. Uh I think that's the best I can get you. Is is that uh Bruce Banner? The Where? one talking to Wolverine? No, that's um that's Luis from Ant Man. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. And then Luke Cage and yeah. and Rosario Dawson. Yeah, I see that. Uh Jessica Jones and Peter B. Parker from Spider Verse. Okay, yeah, I see there, that. There's MJ right behind him from from Spider Man no, uh, Homecoming. There's Peter Parker, the comic book character, and there's Stan Lee all the way in the background We're looking at the map. Okay, I was gonna say that is that is that um, Magneto in the background? Nah, it's Stan. But yeah, it's it's they just like that's the fun part about collecting is eventually. Like collecting these kind of figures is like eventually you end up with figures that just you can use them in different ways that you don't see you don't you might not see at first you know and like but like mm -hmm. but all, that's the that's the coolest thing about the MCU and movie toys is they make so many people in regular ass clothes you know what I mean because like because like I don't know we like seeing them like that in the movies because. They look stupid if they're wearing their costumes all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's probably my biggest problem with Justice League is how often they're just in their costumes standing around. Like I'm like, don't show them standing around. Show them doing things. Like when they look, when they stand around, they look stupid. But when you know, so that's the byproduct is you get characters in business suits and, and jeans and jackets and stuff like that. And then you could fill out a whole subway like scenario by just uh, putting them there and not putting the focus on their faces, you know. So like, so it's kind of like the crop. The crop is what is what makes it easier and, to to not focus on them. And what was this featured in? Uh, Marvelousnews.com. dot com. Um, yeah, they do a they do they actually do a thing where they do. Uh, uh, they highlight toy photographers daily, and so I just I I decided to submit this to the I I was submitting mine every week to them, but other people were submitting theirs every week, and then I was surprised because I was like, hey, this one ended up on their on their website, and then they have a sister website that's for like uh, toy news, so like marvelous news is just Marvel a Marvel website. Um, and then they have like a toy news website that's just all generic toys, and that Snake Eyes Storm Shadow one was featured on that on that one. Nice. Yeah, I've had a few. I can't. I can't remember. I know I've had another one, but I can't remember which one it was. Uh, or no, I, I think I did a different one with Snake Eyes. I actually did a a photoshopped one with GI Joes. Um, oh yeah, I could show you one last one because I know I'm, I could do this forever, but. I do have an out, I do have an outdoor photo. I don't normally do them because they're hard, but I did one outdoor. Well, I've done a few outdoor photos, but this is my favorite one. Uh, yeah, here we go. My favorite outdoor photo that I've done so far. They're they're so much harder because you gotta you get you have to work with the sun, you know. Mm -hmm. Like the sun is is always working against you. But here we go. And I take it you that was the lasers are done in post. No, they actually were shooting them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I photoshopped the lasers. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a decent amount of Photoshop in, in this because the lasers are photoshopped and then uh the metal the metal uh, wires that are, or the metal like um, poles that are holding the figures up, I photoshopped yeah, those out of awesome. out of the yeah. figure too, because that snake eyes is otherwise just floating in midair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the explosions are real. 
uh, real effects. If you and... do Photoshop, you should have included that to those explosions. Uh, yeah, I probably should have. Um, I later on learned how to use those explosions better because they actually are kind of hollow and they can you can fit lights in them. And so I have I have other pictures where I've actually put lights inside of them, and it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that's an outdoor one. Oh man, now you just made me remember. I do have now. Oh shoot! Oh, that's way cooler when I zoom in. Look at that. Yeah, looks really cool. Um, now you're gonna make me do one more because I just remembered one that you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna like. Because uh, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if you voted for this one before, but it is it is one of the better ones that came out really nice. And I'm just looking for it really quick. Where are you, picture? I will let you go to sleep right after this. There it is. I see it. I love this picture so much because it just turned out like my vision. Um, but I think you'll know the reference too. One sec. There you go. Huh. Ha <laughs> uh, That's good. You that, that's an indoor photo, right? That is an indoor photo. Where does it look? He has green stuff around his neck. Where is that? I uh, that's you don't remember this? This is from Hush. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's, I, that's it's Poison Ivy's uh, Poison oh. Ivy's uh, stuff. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know. What that's it is. why. They, that's why they fought because he he was he was under the control of Poison Ivy. Um, but yeah, I think I have a long a wider version of it too. Oh yeah, there's the wide version. So you can see I actually have more stuff going on in the bat cave. There's actually a, 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 a an armored bat suit back there. Yeah, so I was about to ask. So I was like, is that like Batman's <laughs> other suit? Or I'm it like, is. did it they is. actually have, did you have a second Batman or did they actually? I do have a second Batman okay. in there. I have, I have a, it's, it's a bat, it's a Batman figure, but I just don't let you see the face because that would be dumb. Yeah, that would be dumb. That would be yeah. stupid. Um, and then, yeah, see, there it is. There's a, there's a behind the scenes photo that's without the lights. And then there's another one without the lights. And then I think oh, and he put it, that stuff in front of it. That was actually pretty cool. The, the, the debris at the bottom. Yeah. I wanted to have just, I wanted to look like they've been fighting for a little bit. Um, but then, yeah, there's. I actually, this one was so big that I had to do it in the in the dining room because, like, like it's a really big, deep display. Um, so yeah. Now, how does Lindsay feel about you doing all this stuff? She helps. She actually sets up a lot of the lighting for me because she used to work in theater uh, oh. as a as a, uh, I guess like a stagehand kind of. But she didn't do she didn't do the acting. She did all the behind the scenes stuff. So she did a lot of lighting and stuff. So she she helps me like whenever I can, if I can convey to her what the look of the picture I'm going for is, she helps me with the light the lighting. Um, so like this one was easy because I could literally show her the picture from the comic and be like, I want to make it look like this. And so we just kind of work together to figure out how to get, how to get the lights in the right spot to do it and stuff. So she likes it. I mean, she doesn't like, like it's, it's nicer. She likes it more that I've, I've completely con confined it to this room. Like I don't, I used to have to do a lot. I used to like, I used to use a lot of the house for different things a lot of the times. Um, but that's because we used to share this room. And eventually last year, she just decided that she wanted to have her own space and she wanted me to have my own space. So she, she moved out of this room entirely and, and I just took it over. So everything just exists in this room of mine, of my toys. 
I know the feeling because me and Val used to share this room. And yeah. Yeah. That went not really fast. We annoyed yeah. each other so, so quick. We shared, yeah, we shared it for uh, many years. But like, I think when the pandemic happened, you know, she was working in here every day and I wasn't, and I was just doing toy photography and stuff. And uh, I think we just got in each other's way a lot, you know? And so eventually, uh, yeah, eventually she just, she just like packed up her stuff and moved it out into the, cause our dining area is pretty big. So she kind of made her own like office in like the corner of the dining area and she gets a lot of sunlight and like that, that actually, like that's the other thing that was counterproductive for me is I prefer no sunlight around mm -hmm. my toys. I, Cause I, you ever seen, you ever seen toys that have been sitting in, in the, the window of a comic shop for like five years. I, I have two toys over there that I'm so irritated because now that I moved the office around, I see what they look like <laughs> because they were in direct sunlight. In the I sunlight. I realized that they were yeah. in sunlight. Yeah. Because yeah. where they were positioned, I was just like, there's no sun that comes there, but there was sun yeah. that comes there. And yeah. now I look at them, I'm just like, uh. it's actually funny. I saw this thing right here, this picture right here. It's my first, it's my first book that I ever art directed. And I literally had to take, take it out the frame this morning. And when I took it out the frame this morning, the sun, so much direct sun that, that hit this thing, the image was imprinted on the glass. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was just like, motherfucker, I guess I'm never ever selling this shit ever. And it has yeah. everybody who worked on it signed it. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, this actually could be worth something. Maybe later, maybe. Yeah. Is, uh, but yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. I ain't going to sell none. But yeah, that cur that curtain behind me is a, a blackout curtain. Like, it's black on the other side. And so, like, I I prefer to just keep it closed all the time. So that it doesn't hit any of the stuff that I have out. <laughs> and so, you know, when I was sharing the space with her, she would work in here and she liked to have sunlight. And so mm -hmm. it is, it wasn't great for my toys. So like, I, yeah. it's better now. It's better I know now. the feeling. I know how that works. Yeah. But now she's got a bunch of sunlight and I live in this cave and I do my, I do my thing and she does her thing. And then we just come together when it's time to eat and hang, hang out together. Yeah. I like this light. I don't. I, I'm not trying to have much sunlight in here. If you, it's a little, this. it's a little bright. You got a lot of light in there. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's the lights. It's three lights at the top that basically yeah. shine down on me. I'm okay with that. And the, this right here in the daytime, this gets really bright. And it's actually funny because, like, for now, now that I moved everything to where the light is shining this way, I could if I open this window. I actually have to pay attention to when the sun is here because now my screens are facing the sunlight. So I'm just sitting there going like, wow, I don't know if I thought this out fairly well. <laughs> but I learned. Yeah. Anyway, sure. All right. We did a three-hour show, just me and you. Oh, damn. <laughs> and, yeah, and I that's... said nothing vulgar, and I'm not going to get canceled. <laughs> I mean, you'll get you'll get canceled, but it one doesn't way. have to be for this one. Yeah. Not for this one. No, yeah, we shot the shit. That's that's all I do. It, it's it's just hang out for as long as you want to. So that's cool. Uh, you get to sleep in tomorrow because you don't have you don't have to. <sighs> well, not really. I still have to, I gotta take Rocket to daycare, and I gotta drop my sister off at the train station. So at night. All right. So well, I don't get then. to sleep in, but I get to come back and jump back in a bit. So there you go. There, there you go. So. Well, enjoy and keep me posted on what you think about Moon Knight for the next two weeks. Will do. When it happens. Are you going to go see Doctor Strange in theaters? Yeah, I'm trying to. I, I got dinner with my friend Kareen tomorrow, and I think she's trying to rent out a the whole theater for that one. So, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what's happening with her first before I go out and buy tickets. I know I probably, because I haven't bought tickets yet. I know I'm probably not gonna get to see it on the first week, maybe. Yeah, Travis. Travis has promised me that he's seeing it because he uh, 
he wanted he asked to do the, the episode that we do both the the last episode of moon Knight is the same week as dr strange uh -huh. so we're gonna do a double feature and talk about both both things on the show with travis that's gonna go real long yeah that's if i can long. if i can see it the first week i'll i'll chime in yeah well you know they do a lot of thursday shows now at three o'clock it's yeah, but it's also the first week. Wait, it's the twenty fifth. It's twenty fifth, right? No, it's before that. It's 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 May fifth. May fifth. May fifth. Oh, yeah. it's a Friday. Oh, it's my last Friday before I go on break again. So you I, could see I, it I on May to... May fourth on Thursday and May fourth. Yeah, I might be. I might be able to see it. Like if I can. I'm gonna try. I'm literally. I'm definitely gonna try, but I kind of feel like it's gonna be one of those that sell out. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe. who knows? But I'm saying, like, if you take a half day, go at three o'clock. Ain't nobody there. At I just take a. I just take a long lunch. That's what I. That's what I'd end up doing. Three o'clock on a Thursday, ain't nobody there. Well, let me see. Yeah, I'll see what I could do. I, I definitely right. want to. I definitely want to see it, and it will be seen. So. We'll see. Yeah, and then and then if you if you do see it, let me know, and then I'll have you surprise Travis again, like that one time. That shit was hilarious. I will do that. All right, that I will let you know. All right, man. Have a good All weekend. Right. Later. Right. Thanks Later. a lot. Yep. Yeah. Right. I'm playing this thing.